Hey guys, big announcement. My special Lefty Sun will be dropping Wednesday, April 5th on my YouTube. It's free. Go watch it, support it, like it, subscribe. I shot it here in LA in December at the Dynasty Theater, and I'm really proud of it. So go check it out. April 5th, Wednesday, Lefty Sun on my YouTube. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for all the love. Thank you for the support. Thank you for all the love and support of this show. Uh, I'm telling you, subscribe, please. If you're watching, hit it up. It helps us out. And also, keep an eye out for my new special, Lefty Son. Coming out, working on it in post right now. Probably be a couple weeks, but don't worry. I'll be hyping the hell out of it. Just wanted to give you all a heads up now. And if you got to have more, then you got to check out the Patreon. All right. It's called The Honeydew with Y'all. And every week I say it, and every week I am literally blown away by the stories I hear, the submissions that come in. It's five bucks a month. You're getting audio, you're getting video, you're getting the Honeydew a day early, you're getting it ad free, all for five bucks a month. All right. Um, dates. We're going into this easy now, so I'm starting to go back on tour, but not till late May because I got this whole lung situation, which we're about to get into here shortly. Uh, but May 26th and 27th, I'll be in Fort Wayne, Indiana. June 23rd and 24th, I'll be up in Tacoma, Washington. July 7th and 8th, Appleton, Wisconsin. July 21st and 22nd, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Probably going to swing by Eskimo Joe's. You know what I'm saying? Now, you guys know what we do over here. We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Well, unfortunately, today, that's going to be me. So I'm going to introduce my guest host. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the Honeydew, <laughs> Daniel Van Kirk. Welcome back to the Honeydew, young man. Hi, player. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, literally. Um, all right, before we get into everything that we're going to talk okay. about, because you're going to interview me about mm -hmm. this whole situation. Everybody's been asking me about it. We're going to just put all the information out <laughs> sure. there because there's a lot I don't remember. There's a lot I remember. <laughs> uh, I remember things you, you, you don't need to know. <laughs> I remember things I don't need to know. <laughs> uh, oh, right. Before you begin, uh, oh, right. please. Plug and promote everything DVK. Go. Uh, a lot of people know I do a podcast called Dumb People Town. Uh, a lot of people need to know I also do a podcast called Pen Pals. Pen Pals is a show with me and Rory Scovel, and we get letters from listeners about anything. Could be honeydew moments, could be pineapple moments. Pineapple's the inverse of this show. I always feel like it's strawberry, <laughs> strawberry but I hear too. Yeah, strawberry yeah, 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 strong. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh some strawberry moments. It could be anything. People send us letters, and then the way we write them back is reading their letter on air and then giving our response. That drops every single Wednesday. And that is uh, the Pen Pals Pod with Rory Scoville myself. And then live dates. What I have coming up, April 14th in Houston, Texas. It's Would You Rather Comedy. Uh, I, we start out the show by asking the audience like a would you rather just for fun. And then uh, comics throughout the night when they come up, they may get asked a would you rather. I always do one as well. It's a great way to do new material and have fun. The audience knows that you have no idea what it's going to be about. Um, that's a great show. So that's at the secret group, secretgrouphtx.com. And then at the end of the month, the last Saturday of April, I will be in Denver headlining with the Grolix boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Andrew Overdahl, Overdahl Ben Roy, and uh, Adam Caton Holland. So that'll be awesome. Everything's at danielvankirk.com. Well, um, the reason we're doing this is because there were two people who were, well, three. Mm -hmm. That were predominantly there the, the entire Lord. time I was in the hospital. <laughs> One, uh, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, <laughs> but outside those three, uh, yourself, Michael Duffy, uh -huh. and Roy, right? Those are the yeah, three yeah, that yeah. were there a lot. Good old Roy Marks. Good old Roy Marks. All your business management yeah. needs. And um, so let me set up why all this happened. So we're going to go all the way back to- This is your Gilligan's Island. This is supposed to be three hours. It's supposed to be a that's yeah, bro. It was supposed to be a three hour tour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, it is. 
You know what's crazy? I said that to you multiple times in the hospital. I made t-shirts. You wore one. Let's go to that thing. I take this off. I'm wearing one. You're in the photo. Where I remember any of it at all. Oh, shit. This is going to be a long Sickler's episode. Island. <laughs> That's mm. so good. My three hour oh. tour. So, um, but I mean, all the way back. Okay, we go okay. to we go to high school. Okay? okay, we go back to Liberty fucking high school where okay. this injury starts for myself. And you know co- this? I know it for a fact. I, I mean, I I know it for a fact because we had a class called weight training. Okay. And weight training in our high school all powerless was yep right? on the wall three hundred yep. bench five hundred squat yep and if you could bench three hundred it didn't matter if you bent your fucking back we're like, ah, you were getting on we the had, wall we had a machine called the attacker <laughs> and you stood in front of it and had handlebars like this or handlebars like this and you push the weight I'm sure there's a correct way to do it <laughs> yeah. but nobody's yeah. telling a 16 year old in Rochelle Illinois in the halls of RTHS a school that was built at the end of the 1800s how to push this thing I mean yeah this is so what I'm talking about we're all just hurting about. ourselves 500 pound squat so they're not well, teaching you form it's be strong don't be smart right. that's what they're teaching they don't know you. how to position Walk your lower back how far your knees should be if you're like I have pneumonia and I don't think I can play today like why are you being gay man like <laughs> yeah. that's what the yeah. 80s were like yeah, you're yeah. being gay right now yeah. like what Dude, I'm, I'm, I have, I'm sick my, <laughs> my, my arms broke like, I, I have a friend played quarterback right in high school he gets concussed so bad he runs to the sidelines, finds his way there, says, uh, I can't see. I'm not going to say which coach. They said, great, we'll just do a run play. A dummy. Uh, yeah, so, because he knows two <laughs> steps back, turn left. So he's out here running like Lucas, the yeah, movie without yeah. the glasses. So, yeah, that's how little they cared about him. So you get it. That's what's I mean, they, happening. They cared as much as they knew. They just didn't know enough. Right. Right. So um, I get injured and... So wait, doing the squats? Yeah, for sure, doing the squats. And you know it's your lower back? Oh, I'll tell you. So I continue like a moron to play sports because I'm young and Mm -hmm. dumb and full of cum and you can't tell me shit. And it finally catches up to me. Which is crazy for people like us because we got people dying all around us and we still literally we're going to live. Yeah. Yeah. So I finally go see a physical therapist, right? Like, How old are you? I'm what injury was like 16 and then I finally wait till like I can't run anymore my left leg is numb I'm playing soccer my coach is like I can see you galloping like what's going on so they make me go get checked out I get physical therapy um, but I go to this chiropractor first and that was a mistake because this guy no joke his name was Dr. Adolph when I pulled in I was like "Mm, Mm -mm, this is not mm -mm. good he I swear to God man a lot of a lot of them went to Baltimore to hide a lot of them went to Baltimore to hide (laughs) he also uh, was the Baltimore Colts uh, chiropractor okay so this dude's used to fucking snapping and yeah big Bubba Smith and shit Burt Jones you know what I mean Johnny Unitas Art Donovan not my little fucking 16 remember that James Harrison with the acupuncture you remember that from Hard Knocks he's got like 600 needles in him yeah so this guy's used to that 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 type of man okay you know and I go in, and he snap, crackles, and pops my ass. And it, I'm hurt so bad. I crawl up the stairs to go out of there like, oh, God, oh, God. I'm like, oh. So then I go to physical therapy, and they're like, yeah, chiropractor's all wrong from you. He actually irritated this. You have a mm-hmm. slip disc. It's protruding. It's deteriorating. That's what's going on. So I start physical therapy, um, and they put me in traction, which to this day, I wish I had enough money to buy. I'm going to make it a goal to buy a traction table. Really? Dude. I've never done it. It slowly pulls your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it feels so good. Really? Like if you could just hang, you know, those invert yes. tables, they don't work as well. But if you could hang from something, I have a non-sexual fantasy of being hung like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulled apart and then twisted like a fucking you wash rag. Create a little space snap, snap, and then snap. just break up that cartilage yeah. a little bit. Dude, that's, so, uh, that's that ends I'm up working. You. That ends up working. I come back my senior year. I play half the year of soccer. I get honorable mention all Central Maryland. Mm-hmm. I go on to play, you know, my junior college. All I go all JUCO, yeah, fucking soccer, all this shit with this fucking pain still. That's at a five six for constant or coming and going. Constant. Every fucking day, we're at like a level six every day of my life. Right. Okay. 
So finally, after 35 fucking years of this shit, um, it starts to catch up to me. Now How I've do had, you mean? well, I've had like, there'll be, there was a whole time where I couldn't, I couldn't get out of bed. I would, I would move what felt like millimeters in my car seat just to sit so I wouldn't cry and could drive to work and not kill people or myself on the road. Like back pain is literally crippling. So um, I, I start doing epidurals and you can't, you can't do them a lot. The doctor tells me like, look, man, you, you, this is for pain management. It's not mm-hmm. going to fix your problem. Right. It's just going to get you back out there for a while. And then each person's individual. It might last a year. It might last six months. You don't know. This is the type of shit to like get you through the day or the second half of a game. Amen. Not life. So this dude hits me with one in the back the first time, and he's like, and he he ties my leg, like straps my legs down and all this stuff. And he's You're like, laying face down. Yeah. I have no idea how epidural works. The only yeah. time I've it's ever heard the word is needle. occasionally in sports and always during pregnancies. Right. For people who so choose they to hit use you it. with a bunch of numbing needles first because it's a fucking real deal needle, and then they go down and they go right in there where where the agitated spot that dude used to say it's barking he's like that thing's barking and maybe if back then when i was younger i would have got something like this it would have calmed it down enough and i to maybe heal. wouldn't have damaged to it as really, much because yeah, yeah. i'm out there being an idiot and right. just playing a kid so um he's like all right we're done and i start laughing he's like what's so funny i go come on dude i'm not a kid like just just let's get it over with he goes i did do it <laughs> i go nah he goes you didn't feel that i go nah. no he goes, all right, you're going to need to go home and come back again and see me in a week. And I go, okay, I come back the next week. How, how long ago is this? <sighs> 2006, oh, okay. wow. Like so That's when I first started now. getting okay. the, the maintenance. And, um, dude, he hit a nerve. I, if I think about it, I can still feel it run down my I fucking have, left I, leg. I, like I lava had, hitting I, a nerve, like, oh, vibrating. I, was I like, tore my knee up. I dude. can still, yeah. yeah. So that works. It works to get me back out there for a while. <clears throat> By back out there, you mean driving your car and walking around. 2006. Yeah, I'm working out. I'm playing know, but sports. I, yeah. okay. But all in pain. Okay. Every day, pain, pain, yeah, pain. Yeah, yeah. But not a 10. Not a, I can't sit down. Not, I can't stand up. Just a up. nagging Just issue a that hurts. fucking crazy ass pain in and my back. The crazy thing about pain is the longer you go with it, the more you tolerate it. That's right. Which is bad for you. That's it's good, good for survival like in six, seven hundred, two thousand yeah. years ago. Yeah. So, um... At this point, um, I have to go get one more before Stella's born. So that first one lasted me about seven years. Wow. And I get another one when Stella's born, and that lasts me right up until this last one here. And what happened was I was I was – like I, I finally met with this doctor, the surgeon, mm-hmm. who was great, and he said, look, I don't – it's surgery. I don't want to operate on you. Until your quality of life is affected. And I said, all right, well, I'm there. I've done the epidurals, the physical therapy, the Pilates. I've done the So what is this, massages. fall 2022? This early winter 2022? Last year. End of end of last year. Okay, so December, fall, November. Yeah, right around November. there. Okay. And um, I've done the fucking cupping. I've done the this. I've done it all. <clears throat> you know, someone's like, you know what you should try? I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. no shit. Really, I should try a massage? No shit. <laughs> Cairo, I've done it all. I got a crystal in my pocket right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fresh back from Sedona, girl. <laughs> Charged up. <clears throat> so I um <clears throat> excuse me. I tell him I've done these things. And he's like, uh-huh. okay, well then we can talk about it. I said, my legs are numb. So So it's both legs now. That's what happened. At the Troubadour, when I headlined the Troubadour last year, it was the first time right. in my career I had to sit on a stool. I couldn't feel either you of my fucking full legs. Man. Yeah. Because okay. I couldn't feel my legs. Usually, if you watch me, I'll rock back on one leg and I'll sit on like my right hip and just keep the weight off of this leg just because sure. it goes numb. Yeah. Um, As one does. But now I can't do anything and I'm in pain and we're going on vacation. I'm about to take my daughter to uh, Ocean City, Maryland, right? Okay. You said vacation. Go. <laughs> I know. We're going to see our cousins <laughs> at Ocean City, right? And the only thing I can do, thankfully, now comfortably is I can sit. So I can fly fine. I can drive fine. I can sit. I can't stand or walk for shit. Damn. So that's going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. So the doctor gives me painkillers, and he knows. He knows I hate them. I don't like them. He's like, right. you need to take these when you need to because you're not going to get uh, fixed it. until you get back. Yeah. So I bring them with me. We're out. We're driving. We're fine. Whatever. This is a bit of a little fucking. This felt good. 
So uh, we do these little, they have scopes. These guys walk around the beach and they do these pictures and they make you do all these poses and they'll take like 20 of them. And then the next day or later that night, you go to this place, you pick them up, buy whatever you want or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the next morning we all go and they're trying to, you know, trying to sell you on every picture they took. Well, why don't you get the 10 pack? And then my mom's back there like, well, I could get the disc and go to, I go, you're never going to go to CVS and Mm -hmm. do this. Okay. So look, here's the money. Just, just get, and, and now I'm in pain. <clears throat> and I'm like, I'm going to go sit down. Because so, it's like the end of the day. And you know, this is like morning. I'm in just excruciating Jesus, pain nonstop. Right? All I need to do is sit, right? Okay. But it's a building where you walk in as the, the desk and the money. And then you go in the back. And that's where everybody can look at the kiosks and their shit. Right. So I go back. And now I'm sitting at the fucking desk like I'm working at the place. But I'm just sitting there to rest my back. And this young kid walks in. And he's staring at me. And he's like, I go, I'm sorry, dude. Do you work here? Like, I do not work. I, I can't answer any questions. He goes, nah. Are you Ryan Sickler? And I go, yeah, I am. He goes, oh my God, dude, I'm listening to you on the Honeydew right now. I was like, dude, thank you so fucking much. <laughs> my cousin, my mom, they were like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we leave, and my mom uh, texts me when she gets in the car. She's like, oh my God, they gave me all of everything we talked about. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, good. There you yeah, go. There's yeah, your fucking yeah, pictures. Great. So now I know I'm coming back and uh, I'm going to wrap up the tour. I shoot the special, Lefty Son, coming out on my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm going in for this surgery, right? This surgery, as you said, is supposed to be a simple three-hour yeah. outpatient procedure. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to go in at nine, surgery at ten. I'm done by one, a little bit of anesthesia, whatever. Bam, I'm out. And then you got the whole weekend. The therapy is walking. They want you moving, blood flow, blood sure, flow, yeah, blood yeah, flow. Yeah, yeah. This is on so, a Friday. This is on a Friday. I go in, right? So let's we'll take a look at our first picture here, Kirsten. Can we look at the first picture here? That's me right there, getting all set up for my fucking look at, simple three. Look at it. Look at the hope in those eyes. <laughs> this dude told me. Look, this motherfucker has no idea. This he, is a man who's going to spend sold. the better part of a month <laughs> laying in bed talking to me like he's my grandpa, Grandpa Joe. <laughs> I'm trying to win a golden ticket. <laughs> That's a man who was promised he would enter his he, he 50s like pain free. You oh, can't, yeah. I said to the surgeon, like, you can't tell a man that's going in his 50s he's going to be pain free after everything I've no. felt all these you're years. He's great. like, you're going to be great. You know what's crazy, too? Little did you know you were about to lose 15, 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. But also, even at this point and prior to this, in all of my paperwork, sure. I document Mm. That I have a genetic blood disorder called Factor Five Light. Oh, I know. We'll get into that. You don't shut the fuck up about and the, these. And I, that's right. And the reason I n- did that is because in 2016 I developed kidney stones. My legs end up clotting. They think I have Why? cancer, leukemia. They don't know at the time. But you weren't like bedridden. You didn't have some other. Deal. I was bedridden from the kidney stones. I was. That's cr- what I did. did. That's okay. what did it. Right. Or brought it to that's, the surface. So. It takes six months of being in and out of hospitals and being a fucking lab rat to figure out that I've got this this blood disorder called factor, factor five. five light. And now it's genetic. So now I'm gonna tell everybody I'd never heard this term <laughs> at all before 2023. <laughs> this is the word of the year in my life. Fucking factor five, factor five. I, I literally, I, if I was like, <laughs> you I, might if get I, it. If I drink you every time this motherfucker it. says factor five, <laughs> you should do that. And listen back to this. So <laughs> it's genetic, and my mother test, she doesn't have right. it. My brother test, he doesn't have mm-hmm. it. I have a twin brother, different egg, but this motherfucker did not get it. Right. My younger brother doesn't get it. I'm like, well, shit, I'm the one who got it, and obviously I get it from my dad, mm-hmm. right? And then I start thinking about, all right, well, when he died, we know now that it wasn't really a heart attack. It was these blood clots and everything, and we knew he had them from – he did have a heart attack, but he also left the hospital with clots like I have. Um, and then it just sucks because you think, man, if he would have been – if they'd have known, they'd have put him on blood thinner and he could still be here God, easily. Yeah. Um. And then going back to being the person that watched my grandmother collapse Mm -hmm. and then give her CPR and mouth to mouth, all that, like, I'm like, oh, that's probably the fucking woman who gave this to him, Mm -hmm. who gave this to me. Appropriately Mm -hmm. named special lefty son. Keep an eye out for it on my (laughs) YouTube. So, um, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you factor five? It's five. (laughs) It's (laughs) light. Sounds like a healthy protein bar. (laughs) 
No, an unhealthy one. It's got I had, 80 listen, grams of know, sugar in it. I got an ego, too, because I've been here at Factor 5 Light and Light and Light. I said it to one of the guys on the phone. He goes, you have Factor 5 leading and correcting me like that. I was oh, like, this God. motherfucker right here. <laughs> so Wait. I started asking people, how do you say it? He goes, it's lighted. It's lighted. You test your daughter for it yet? So that's where it gets that's a little. That's what I was curious about. It's necessary. Or do you wait? You have to wait because she's young and, you, you know. Yeah. The pediatrician said, look, until you need to, like, because pregnancy, a, a bed rest for pregnancy could kill her if they don't know she has it, right? right? So could it, God forbid, she's in an accident or a health scare or anything, could kill her if she doesn't know she has it. So um, they know I've already made them aware I have it. So also, um, we were told that, I didn't know this, but birth control for women is uh, makes them prone to clotting. So mm. if you have this, you don't take birth control. So there's all kinds of reasons she does need to know if she has it. But Eventually. it's she got time. Yeah, and it's interesting. I don't want to say her name, but she's a friend from high school. Just in case she doesn't want her business out there, but her name's Kathy. What's up, Kathy? And her son, I believe, is 19 and started having clotting issues. And I said, you should have him checked for this shit. Yeah. And lo and behold, he's got it. And I was like. Here's the bad news. You, you got to get it. checked yep. now. And she's got it. No shit. Now her parents have to get checked. And she's got it from both of them. Wow. And that's when it's bad. That's how you know they're meant to be. If you have two parents, it's not good. Right. One is okay. But she's also had three kids. Yeah, you know, yeah, she's yeah. gone through the gauntlet of things that could really fuck her up yeah. until we get to old age. That's right. right. You got to keep that machine moving. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so you go in on Friday and you're telling everybody, hey, I got I got factor five. It's in my paperwork. Even the surgeon goes, you're really concerned about that factor five. And I was like, uh-huh, because I clotted before. I thought you were drugs. And first I was like, he means factor fiction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you tell them. I had ended up having an incident but also, before. How much are you even, you're telling them, which is good, but we're talking three hours, man. Three hours. This is. And it's something seriously like 0 0.001% of people have any kind of issues. With but I should have walked in to see Babylon the same exact time you went into surgery. And yeah. you'd be out while I'm still watching Babylon. <laughs> yeah. That's what's I supposed would. to have happened. I'd already been fluttering my eyes though. <laughs> right. And I got Where's 15 DBK? more minutes. He's, yeah. still, he's still in no. Babylon. I'm yeah. like, all right, I beat him. I beat him. It's worth it. I love it. <laughs> so I, the reason I was so worried about this and knew what I was talking about was because I had, I figured out that I had it before, sure, yeah. but also I had clotted and I kept telling them, they're like, no, you're not. No, you're. I'm like, man, I'm home. There was a point when in 2016, when I laid in my bed and gave myself up, I knew I was going to die. Right. I was crying. I was ready to go. I couldn't, no one would do anything. So finally I go in search of this oncologist, everything. My Primary care physicians the one to figure it out. And they were like, you need to keep that, dude. No primary care physician figures out somebody's got this. Mm. So and now I've got it. Now i got to be aware of it. And I've had no problems. I wear my compression pants on flights. I get yeah. up every 90 minutes on a flight. I walk to the back. I stretch out. I'm that idiot because I have to keep blood I'm flowing. I'm, I go in the bathroom so I don't bother anybody. Sure. And I do I do quad stretches in there. You can hear me banging. Like, ah! <laughs> God, I'm doing marches in there and shit. I know people think I'm shitting, but I'm in there for 10 minutes. That guy, he's in a fight for his life. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like I am, dude, for real. I'm in there doing all kinds of stretches I and saw, shit. He ate a lot of Garrett's popcorn before we took off. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. So <laughs> I tell them everything, right? Yeah. And But also, it shouldn't have mattered that much. Three hours. It shouldn't have. But, okay, keep going. So I go into the three-hour outpatient procedure, mm -hmm. and that day, it happens to be one of the days that's pouring down rain out yeah. here in L.A., and we're, this city is so ill-equipped for precipitation from the fucking sky. Mm -hmm. And um, I get there at 9, like they say. My stepson, Derek, picks me up, takes me in, and uh, 10 a.m. is when the surgery is, and I'm waiting, and 10 comes and goes 11, 12. Right. One, I, I'm fine. I'm like, what is going on out there? And this nurse peeks her head in. She's like, look, I was hoping you'd already be back there before my shift was over. But um, there's a leak in one of the ORs and we're cramming everyone into the one. And I'm like, all right, well, why am I? I had a 10 a.m. schedule. Why am I going later? You'll be going in 30 minutes. I heard that twice. <clears throat> 6 p.m. comes around. And I'm being taken back. I'm the last fucking one being taken back. 
So he wheeled me back. Derek had to go. He's long gone. Yeah. And um, I fucking wake up. And this is the next picture here if you want to take a look at this. This is what I see when I wake up. Okay. When okay. I wake up, this is my view. Now, that's that's it, right? Everyone's gone. Yeah, it's Friday. These Friday lights night. are out. Like, they're wrapping Friday up. Friday night. Right? These, this, this was good cop right here. Uh-huh. But bad cop is... Actually, this is bad cop. Good cop was over here talking to me. There's two nurses, good yeah. cop and bad cop. Yeah. Good is very Rocky Four. Good cop was the American lady. <laughs> this is the Russian over okay, here. Okay. Yeah. She might have been Czech, but at Eastern I Bloc mean, over here. When I walked in, I heard her say, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> he dies. <laughs> he dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, dude. I'm sorry. You know, the other one's like, I see a lot of change in that. <laughs> the way that I if I about change, you, you can change. Yeah. So I'm waking up. This is my view. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, hey, your stepson can come back here because everyone's gone. There's literally no one sure. here. Yeah. So he comes back and sits there. And they're like, all right, before you leave, you have to pee. And I'm like, okay. So I try to pee and I can't pee. And right. I know what's coming. And I'm like, you're not putting a catheter in me. And they're like, if you don't pee, we are. I'm like, you're nah, not. Nah. You're not. Right. Like, well, we need to go. And I was like, yeah, but it's not my fault that I went at 6 o'clock. Right. Like, if I went at 10 a.m., I'd be out by 1. Because mm -hmm. how long of a procedure is it? Three hours. That's it. Yeah. You could have screwed around until five hours. That's what I said. Yeah. I could have took five, six hours to take this piss. But now you want me to get it done in 45 minutes. Right. And I need a little more time to recover. You know the saying? You, your failure to prepare is not my emergency. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So... um. They're, you know, bad cop is threatening to put this thing up my dick hole. And good cop's rooting for me. She's like, come on, just get in there. She's like, do you want a heating pad? Or sure. she's giving me hot compresses mm -hmm. to put on my dick and balls, cold ones. I'm like, give me a cold one. I'm putting everything I can on my shit. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's going to go, but it's not going anywhere. Okay. And they're like, okay, you get one more try. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I don't. So I get up. Derek's sitting right here. He has no idea hospital gowns open in the back, dude. I put, I just bent over and gave him a little one right in his face. He's like, oh, dude. I was like, you got to be where were you sitting at the hospital? <laughs> you right. know, he's like, I didn't know they were from the back. I'm like, yeah, yep. dude. So I go back in and I'm like, all right, we got to fucking get this done. Because the, the thing they tell me, too, is if, if they put a catheter up your dick, you now have to pee on your own in 24 hours or – your bladder could explode and you could die, she says. And I said, how long does the anesthesia last? They said 24 hours. I said, it's 9 o'clock. What do you think I'm about to do? I'm about to go right. home and sleep. This right. shit's knocking me out. I'm definitely not going to get up in eight hours and pee on my own. Like, I'm not fucking leaving now that you said that. I'm not doing it. And I go, to finally, I go, what do you want to go home? Is that what it is? Like, you're tired you're of saying being here. I'm Russian? saying it to the Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she fucking, you know how a She's horse like, does that no exaggerated home. head yeah. shake? Yeah, That's yeah. how she yeah. said yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the American lady over there, she's like, no, no. I go, look at her. She's not lying. She wants to go. You're like, give I me go. a nurse back here that needs the hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> give me somebody that fucking got a car payment or something. <laughs> oh, shit. So what happened? So I finally, I go back and I Because this is all before I oh, enter this the picture. Is, this is just the this is, procedure, right. bro. So I finally, I fucking say, um, all right, I'm going to go in and get this done. I can do it. I'm uh -huh. doing it. And I fucking yeah. go in. I, you know, I'm, you're talking to yourself. Champ I'm like, up. come on, motherfucker. <laughs> come on. And I just start pushing as hard as I can. Then I'm scared I'm going to blow the fucking surgery out because I'm like, ah. <sighs> and I just start fucking pissing everywhere. I'm like, right. oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm having that moment in there yeah, where I'm yeah. so had I just like, oh, God. And then I was like, is that enough for you? I yeah. said it to the Russian. She's like, that's plenty. So we get yeah, out of there yeah. now, right? Yeah. Now she's wheeling me out in the wheelchair. This lady is, Who is the Russian. Okay. And she is, the doors are extra wide. Bang. Bang. And I was like, Everything. oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. bang, bang, bang. Let, it's in the Russia, we pee on you. <laughs> <laughs> Shoves me out in the fucking rain. And I go home. Derek yeah. takes me home. Yeah. And then I'm by myself for the weekend. The right. the, the surgeon called. He's gone. Mm -hmm. But he had gone around to each person. So I was very excited to hear what happened to me and everything. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not getting that because he's probably out fucking having dinner. It's weekend. And shit. Yeah. So he calls me on the next day and he's like, man, it was more complicated than we thought. Uh, the age of the injury, you know. You're What's really going on? You got 
It's Muscular damage? Spinal stenosis decompression was the surgery. And what he tells me is that my, my nerves had hardened because it had been so long and they wrapped around my spine and they were squeezing my spine. So that's why now both of my fucking legs are going numb. It's getting there. He said there was leakage. He said the L3, 4, and 5, those bottom ones, had the, the passageway was pretty much gone. He mm -hmm. had to re construct those he had there's some lining around your nerves whatever that he had to reinforce all this shit he's like when you get through this you're gonna be a new man i'm telling you and i was like all right so he goes because of reincarnation yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be, you, so he's like um send me pictures of what it looks like and i send him pictures of what it looks like he's like all right so it's not responding the way it should so instead of you walking around Wait, you sent him pictures on Saturday? Yeah, or? we're going to show him. Okay. Yeah, he yeah. called me on Saturday to tell me everything. Yeah, he was yeah, right, awesome. Right, right. You know, he and gave me his personal When do you send photos number. of your progress? On Saturdays, the okay. first day. Okay. okay. We could take, let's take a look at these pictures right here. So this is what it looks like when I get out of surgery right here. Okay. Now, yeah, that's not supposed tell to be. these people what they're about to see. Yeah, you're here. about to see some surgery pictures. Well, too okay? late now. That's not terrible. It's not terrible. Now, it gets but gnarlier, but it's not. It looks like you have an Ace of Spades tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing right there. <laughs> That's a Cancun story. We'll cover that part two. <laughs> what is going on? Is that just bruising? Uh, no, I think that's like, I don't know what it is, to be honest. I don't know if that's like where they mark me Only or you what. would turn your first post-op surgery picture into an Under Armour ad. You believe it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so now Woo! it's supposed to be going down looking like a normal spine, but here's where it just starts to swell. And mm -hmm. then here's one more after that. Okay. That's where he's like, all right, this thing's not doing what it's supposed to do. No. So now I want you on bed rest. Right. And I'm like, all right, but remember, he's like, I remember. remember you're supposed to walk. You got factor five line. I'm right. like, that's it. But, and they told you walking is what's good for this. After that's what's done. really but good now, for this. Lay down. So he wants to see me on. Tuesday, I go in on Tuesday, and he sees it, and he's like, all right, you're going into surgery today. They admit me to Cedar sinai the ER room. They're like, don't worry. We're going to try to give you act, you know. This is a different place than where you had the procedure. I went to the same Outpatient. place first, and they're now sending me to the hospital at Cedar sinai Okay. And I go in, and um, we're in the ER, and it's, again, it's pouring down. It hasn't stopped pouring mm -hmm. down rain. So every fucking lunatic – is in the ER. Right. All the homeless people, all the crazies. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's it's a free for all. And I'm in a wheelchair, and I'm like, hey, I can't sit like this. I need to lay down. Is there a bit now? Nope. Anything in the hallway? No. Nope. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't. So I'm showing and the nurses like, oh, we'll try to get you in right away. They push me. I see them sending me over to the crazy corner. I was like, uh, uh, don't <laughs> put me over there. No, oh, we'll get to right that. here. Yeah, put me in here. I, I see this guy's screaming at everybody. He's going around hustling people for loose change for sodas. Uh, we see one homeless guy, and again, Derek, my stepson, who's yeah. been a rock through all this, driving me. We see this homeless guy strike a security guard, so now they're dragging him out. Like, it's it's mayhem. And I keep begging them. Two hours goes by, three hours. I'm like, I can't sit. Like, can I please? I'll lay on the floor over there. Like, you cannot lay on this filthy floor. I'm like, oh, my God. So... Six hours, I wait, and we finally get admitted. Now I'm having the surgery. Bing, bang, boom, I'm out again. I wake up, and they wheel me into what I call general population, yeah. that gem pop area. Mm -hmm. And that is when you showed up. I called you on Wednesday. I talked to you on Wednesday and said, I'm coming tomorrow, because you were like, don't come today. <laughs> Did I, I don't yeah. remember. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so on Thursday... I find you. <laughs> you can't even tell me where you're at. No. You didn't know if you were in North Tower, South Tower. They didn't Tower. tell me anything, You didn't know though. what in flower, my defense. Uh, floor you were on. You didn't know what <laughs> bay you were in. No. I literally had to just find you. Nothing. Here you are right here. Look at you. Showing up at the hospital. Yep. That's where I was. That's yep. Jen Pop Representing right Representing Rochelle. <laughs> I am. That's what's on that mask right there. I couldn't fucking find. I didn't know where anything. I didn't know where That's I was right at when all. I walked in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I walk in there, and you were telling me stories. Now, when does the when does the I don't I don't want to step right, on so, it. So, so I'm in an area just just to be clear that is 
Like, I know I'm going to be there for a couple days. Mm-hmm. Like, but again, now it's just supposed to be three days. I'm supposed to be in there just to heal. This isn't a room. I want everybody to understand. It is, it is a curtain. It's a nurse's station, essentially. And all the beds, and there's like eight of them, I would imagine, are separated by curtains. That's it. That's it. Yeah, if we can... Yeah, here's my view right here. There's my curtain right there. Let me tell you something. A lot. That, motherfucker, hey, that motherfucking unbuttoned thing drove me nuts. Was it you who fixed it? Who fixed no, that it wasn't button? Me. It drove me nuts. That I was like, button. A lot happens button. on the other side of that curtain. Oh, it does. Yeah. But see, when you're laying flat on your back, you don't see anything unless it's high enough into that mesh area. Now, right. that's this is what it looks like on both sides as well. So that's where I am. But mm-hmm. also this room... I have a lady who I met on my right named Chandra who had been there for a day or two and was about to get out of there. But the person on my left was there for two hours from a thumb surgery. This person was there for three hours recovering from a knee. So it's, they're coming in and out. But I'm like a resident. Yeah. And that's when I start to hear what I call the mayor of the floor over here, this fucking homeless guy that is – He's got that, you know, that, oh, that stream voice, I need my medicine, yeah. I need my... And every day, this motherfucker is screaming. Well, he was yelling. screaming when I got there on Thursday. So you'd only been in there a day, and he already had his fish picked out that he wanted. Was that on Wednesday or Thursday? Or was it before I got there? It was later, because it, it finally built on me. Like, I couldn't... So, you know, there's people playing music and shit. I'm fucked up. Yeah, I know. I can't sleep. I can't rest. I can't do anything. They're cranking. Hey, it's part. I'm only here for my thumb, you know, and I'm like, what the fuck? And um, also, I'm laying there one night, and this poor lady comes in, and I want to say this because of one of my sponsors, Babel. I started taking Spanish lessons a while ago, and I was able to tell that this lady who on the phone was telling her family members that she had tested positive for COVID, (laughs) and I only know that she was crying because they wouldn't do her surgery, and you had to have a negative COVID test to get surgery done. So now she's upset that they're not going to – I'm putting it all together in Spanish. Maybe there's mesh between you and her. It's just curtain. Yeah. Yeah. So they start – dumping me full of Dilaudid and morphine to f- start with morphine and stuff. Yeah. And You're I don't soaring. I don't like drugs like sure. that. I'm weed. I'm shrooms once in a while. That's mm-hmm. it. I don't even drink that much. I like to keep myself close to myself. But homeboy down there has been bugging people so, all night and he's understand. screaming. If you're here, if I'm Ryan, there's one person to my right. Mm-hmm. Then there's one Maybe two to the left. And then it starts horseshoeing. It starts dog legging, yeah, whatever you right. want to call it. So if I'm here, this person is <laughs> He's right, right on over that dog here. leg. Yeah. He is right yeah. on the turn. Yeah, yeah he is. And That's he exactly wants, where he is. And he wants He wants everything tilapia. he fucking wants. Yeah. That's right. So this motherfucker is, <clears throat> and all night, two, three in the morning, he all night long, he would not, not stop. Oh, oh. Oh, I need the medicine. Oh, and then some of the night people were so sick of it this they is like gave prison. it to him. Right? Yes. He's he's your and Andy I'm flat Dufresne. on my fucking back. I'm flat on my back. I can't do. Or maybe shit. you're his Andy Dufresne. So Brian Sickler didn't make a sound that night. <laughs> <laughs> he cost me two drops of Delada. I sat there and took it and took it. Yeah, and took you're just it. processing. And then that was when he hit him with that last one. He's like, I want the tilapia. And I just said, how the fuck do you know we get tilapia? Like, I lost my shit. I'm after day five. I'm in there now. (laughs) The nurse came in. I go, that is ridiculous. You're tattooing yourself. (laughs) Tilapia. Tilapia. Do you know how specific that is? Was he wrong? He was not wrong. (laughs) He got tilapia. And i that's when I was saying, like, I realized that this gets wilder. I'm responsible for a life. Yes. I, I don't know anything the way a junkie knows the system. Sure. You know, I should know parenting Sadly, yeah, the yeah. way a junkie knows the system, and I don't. I don't know anything <laughs> in life the way a fucking junkie Mm-mm. knows the system. This motherfucker gets tilapia, and I can't get over it. And I'm also starting to lose my mind because the, the law that is now in my IV and – 
as I told you, I'm starting to fucking hallucinate. I'm oh, yeah. seeing, I'm Shakes. seeing your mask flip on and off, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And that, and then I just start to see chunks of flesh fall off your fucking face, bloody chunks, and I can see the skull behind your face, and I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh, I'm like, hur, hur, hur. I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh, I'm seeing, I'm having dreams of guys laser my eyes out, and I can hear the dirt crunch from them in their suits. Like, if Why? any, if any. Fucking and all you wanted was tilapia. All, he wanted. I just I wanted. Know, I, I want to be different. pain free, bro. Yeah. Wait, what were you saying about filmmaker? If they could have got in my head, they would have had. You were having, blockbuster. We'll fucking, get there, but you were having crazy dreams. Dude, it was frightening. Blockbuster. Fucking sci-fi Horror, shit. Event Horizon. Melt me and stuff. Shit. And I'm hearing yes. Puppet Master. All of it. Yeah. So, um, I'm in there for a while, and I keep saying, don't let me clot, don't let me clot. Finally, after like five or six days, somebody comes in, and they ultrasound my legs, and they say, you don't have any clots in your legs. Wait, you're dropping five or six days? Don't you want to talk about getting out of there? Don't you want to talk about the tilapia dude yeah. and his girlfriend? Yeah. This is day two. That all happens in there. Was it that, that yes. early? See, I don't remember being that early. I thought two. it was later. I show up, and you are in the gen pop area, yeah. and you're... and I. I'm gonna say this to all the do's and honey do's and don'ts out there. You, <laughs> he's on every 30 seconds. He's like, man, I don't even know what you're saying. Right now. <laughs> I don't remember I'm like, saying that to you. Yeah. And I'm like, we're talking, <laughs> you guys. I also show up. Remember, he's on a three hour tour. Okay. He also thought when he went back in, he wasn't gonna be in there by Thursdays. Three like, days. They said, yeah. yeah. I'm getting out I today. Enough. I took enough. Like I took a pair of fucking. I took a charger. You're lucky. A pair work, of underwear. Yes. You're and, lucky we're comics because my backpack just has whatever I need for flights, hotels, all this shit. I gave you chargers, eye, eye masks, masks uh, headphones, yeah, over the ears and stuff like that. Because you didn't have shit, and you also were trying to do the way you are. Where you're like, nah, I'll, I'll play. I'll get my own stuff. I'm like, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. And so you telling me about this guy, and he's screaming, and I'm like, okay, Ryan, all right, yeah, sure, I, it's, I know, I know. And you're like, oh, it's things are going on. And then I hear all this commotion, and I look up. But wait, let me say why, though, because I want to set this up. So I brought in three days of my own meds, Yes, and I learned that you're not allowed to do that at the hospital. They want your shit. They'll replace it, Yes, but we're going to inventory it. We'll hold it until you cannot. They'll give you whatever you need that you have, but they can't just take your word for it that what's ever in these bottles. Right. And this guy's girlfriend shows up. Uh Uh-huh. And she's being a problem right. where you start you to can realize. Already tell, you already know her purse is never past her elbow. It's <laughs> yeah, always never. kind of around this area. And yeah. we keep hearing them say, ma'am, you can't lay on the bed. So now I'm like, oh, these two junkies. This is before, That's before I got there. Right. Know the system. She's yeah. basically sharing a bed with him because, as a visitor, quote yeah. unquote, because yeah. if not, she's got to go through what I just went through of six hours of this and blah, blah, blah. Right. And she needs this fucking fix. Right. right. So go ahead. So they go through her stuff, right? <laughs> and they say, we need to take these pills if you're going to be in here. And you told me, and I was like, Ryan, come on. You're like, she didn't like that a bit. And you go, you go, she just started eating all these pills. She, dude. And I'm like, she, here's listen. the deal. You can't see anything. <laughs> no, so this is all theater of the mind. You're listening to a goddamn drugged out radio play. <laughs> I can't see shit. No. It's all it's fucking fireside <laughs> chat. And I don't know what part of you I'm supposed to believe and not believe. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, like, I'm sure, Ryan. Right. I'm sure, Ryan. Right. And you're like, no, she started. Proud of it. Yes, Proud. taking all this stuff. And then about <laughs> <laughs> and then there's one nurse that you made friends with. Yeah. And she she would be like, she'd give you the like, I'm with you type look and stuff like that. And so then <laughs> I, we start hearing all this commotion and I don't know what to believe from you and not to believe. And so I look out over like the mess in the photo. I look out over the mess thing and there are nine cops. <laughs> yeah, dude. They were the- I'm not shitting you. There are nine I can only see cops. one. Yeah, he was Everybody the tall one. was too short. Yeah. There are nine cops. And all you're hearing is like, well, we got to take her fast when we take her. I'm like, what the fuck? I know. I'm just laying there like I'm talking to you. I'm like, we're in Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> she took all those pills. And they're talking about how they're going to apprehend her and take her down. And also, to be fair, at least four or five, at least four or five of the cops are like, we don't need nine cops. Like, even they were like, 
<laughs> you don't need, but it did. It but you don't know what the, kind of you don't know what kind security. of pill strength you're going to yeah. be dealing security with. Security came in first, like that. Nope, she took him. Now we got. Now we got. Now it's a crime. Yeah. So now we have to call the cops because oh she wouldn't my give the God. pill. And, I just kept and they all rolled in. And I look over around. I'm like, we got to get you out of here. You just got one tear, <laughs> and you're like, you got you got nine mouths right now. <laughs> I'm like, well, look at all of them. Because we, we got to get you out of here. Because you're waiting for a bed. They keep telling me they're going to put me in my own room. They've been saying that since day one. Look, I, you can tell me why I'm skipping too much. People, this is Thursday. Ryan is in this place till Sunday. I got there on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, six days on I spent Sunday. in there. On Sunday, because I come We're by two Sunday days night. And I'm like, God help me. I can't sleep. I right. can't nothing, nothing. I come by on Sunday night. Oh, your your lady to your right is gone. Chandra. But the funny thing about her is I finally, when I saw the flesh and everything calling, when I called the nurse in, I said, hey, I'm seeing... Like fucking flesh fall off your face yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. She's like, what? And Chandra through the cur- never saw what she looked like. She goes, I'm seeing that too. I go, Chandra, oh, yeah. you're not speaking no. up. She's like, oh my God, I'm tripping. I said, yeah, you we're guys, tripping. You guys synced up on your trips. We did. We oh, really my did. God. It's like what dreams may come. Like, Get this shit out of my IV and give me the oral pills. This oh, is my way God. Too much. And then I'm like asking you, and you're like, you know what I need, Dan? And I'm like, what do you need? And you're like, a Diet Coke. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I, that I can do. That I can do. So this is, that's Thursday. If whatever oh, I skip, you yell at me, but on Sunday night, they go, and this is where it starts to get real sad. You think already? No. Sunday night, they go, we got a, we got a room for you. And you go, I mean, I'm leaving in the morning. Yeah. And I go, I, I go, right. Spend my I go, right. Why don't we take you up? To, I mean, is there any point? And I go, yeah, there's a point. Let's just get you up to, even if it's just tonight, because your bed was broke. It was broke. It was broke. Do you it was. That? Yeah, of your course. bed couldn't I, even. Listen, I didn't until you said I was getting mad. I'm like, stop moving. And please, that last nurse, he knew how to do it. He got it. Yeah, don't your touch bed, it. Yeah. It had like its own, like somebody made a crank. <laughs> it had its own yeah. thing and it was broke. So I go, hey, even if it puts you in the center of the room, <laughs> right. Oh, at least you have one night in a good bed and you're like all right we'll go up there and so then we take you up to uh your other room mm-hmm. and that that was even a process getting you into another bed you're like, can i just keep my bed i know it's broke but it's mine well you were like a marine with an m16 this is my bed <laughs> there are many like it but, but this here's what i mine. remember when they tried to move me out of my bed, I know they bent me in half and they said, "Are you all right?" And I remember saying, "No." no. Do I look all right? <laughs> right? I'm not okay. They were trying. They were trying. They were trying. But that's when you told me that was the beginning of recording things because you said through oh, all yeah. your experiences yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and Family your mom stuff. was yeah. a nurse grandma. for forty yeah. years, yeah. or and your grandma was how old when she was in the hospital? Well, most recently, the one where nine, yeah, ninety two. And what happened to her? They dropped her. They dropped. Her. That's yeah. what you tell me I'm up, I'm up. when they're trying to swing me across this bed. I said, if they dropped her 92-year-old ass, if you've heard me on the honeydew, or me. you roll back to the crab feast with me, and you know I've never had a three-way and people pee on my sandwiches, <laughs> I consider myself, and I hope one of my best friends would too, a, a nice person. Yes, you're absolutely a nice but person. But if you want to see every single ounce of Midwest born on a farm Anger man, drop my ninety-two-year-old grandma. <laughs> yeah, dude, and I don't you will know see. How. I'm like Wyatt Earp and Tombstone. You tell them hell's coming. Yeah, you look comfortable when they were bending me in half. Over well, there. that was fine. <laughs> that was fine. <laughs> you look just fine. I knew. I knew. Um, I knew we were in for the long haul. So yeah, we get in that room. Now that's also the night the Ravens are playing. And we're doing good. And at half, it's like perfect. At half time, they're moving me. Yeah. No, I remember. See? Yeah, that was I one of my selling points. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember halfway from, oh, God, all these things. Halfway from Gen Pop to your uh, solitary cell, they, <laughs> they forgot something. And you had to like. We, my walker. Yeah. I didn't remember that. Yeah. I was and, like, no, I need you, my walker. And you were like, we're so close, Stevie K. We're so, I'm like, we'll get there. We were in the hallway for like five, 10 minutes. Now, here's the thing but we jumped over. This, this is the problem, though, and it's not her fault. The, the nurse or, or maybe a nurse practitioner or orderly, forgive me for not knowing all the right roles, who took you, she doesn't know you've been given a 
uh, special walker that they want you to have. I don't know that. You're on drugs. So like sometimes someone literally is doing their job to the best of their ability and things can still go wrong just because of shift changes, who told who, what. Miscommunication, all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So So, yeah, we get your room. The Ravens are Jump back real quick for a second. I'm on a Saturday. They tell me that I need to pass this physical fitness test. Uh, because I have a flight of stairs getting in my You were home. maybe going to leave Friday. That's it. You were maybe going to leave Saturday. And they were you like, were maybe gonna leave Sunday. you got to do this. And I sit up and they're like, look, you've been laying down for like five or six days. You haven't gotten up at all. Just let's just see if you can sit up and not get dizzy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, I get wildly dizzy. Wildly. And they're like, you can't do it today. And I'm like, fuck. And I just want to get out of there. So now it comes Sunday. <clears throat> And you know what else? And you touched on this. We can't we can't skip this because it becomes such a huge deal. You've got these that I told everybody I had Factor Five light. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, God. <laughs> You've got these. Uh, they look like reverse oh, yeah. shin guards. I've got calf pumps on because you are you are uh, worried about your Factor Five. You can, the amount of times you made me adjust these mother. That ain't right. That ain't turn it now. Turn okay. <laughs> Unplug it. <laughs> Hold it down. It's going to beep twice. Yeah. It, it's literally, I felt like you were walking. Like, right. like I right, was in it's speed. Green. And you're like, yeah. cut. there's going to be a red wire. <laughs> you need to cut the red wire and, and count to three. Before you get to three, you need to cut that green wire. So oh, you've got these things, and you're wearing them, and they're they're like compression shin guards, but not yeah. for your shin. They're for they're your pumps, calves. Calf pumps. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so these are a whole ordeal. Anytime you move, anytime I, I, I need to tuck your sheet for you and all that stuff. And uh, I, I don't know why you made me keep blowing you, but they <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure it worked <laughs> that we were good friends. But uh, you, you, would, these, you were very conscious of these and you made sure they're always on and not just on, on right and working. Because I was, was big scared deal. to death, yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. of okay. death. So when you do physical therapy on Saturday, and they tell you you get through this, you're going to be fine. You have some sort of physical, almost it seemed like respiratory or something, something in your chest set back, and now that's why you couldn't leave on Sunday. No. So what happened on Saturday was, yeah, I sat up and felt weird and dizzy. That's what it was. Yes, I dropped back. I lay back. They're yes. like, we're not going to do it. Right. Sunday. Oh, look at we can see your. You can see your. Uh, oh yeah, there's yeah. my ca- there's my calf pumps. Yeah. Right there. There they are. Those are on wrong with that picture. <laughs> <laughs> are they? No, they're on, I mean, they're, yeah, they need to be spun. <laughs> they need to be spun for yeah. sure. They're on right, but they need to be spun. Okay. Um, so um, I fail. I don't fail that day, but I don't, I'm not so, allowed to take the yes. test. On, on Sunday, I go to take the Walker test again and I'm able to sit up fine and this is all before the Ravens game it was an evening mm-hmm. game mm-hmm. and I get the Walker and they just had me literally do a senior citizen circle and I the guy's like you did great you know that's it for today and I'm I think he's joking I'm like that's it and he's like yeah you don't want to overdo it trust me you can overdo it and he goes tomorrow which is Monday yep. MLK day mm-hmm. you have to pass your stairs test you pass your stairs test you're out of here out of I'm here. like we're fucking out of this motherfucker yeah. thank yeah. god yeah so I leave you after the Ravens lose. Yep. So I get transferred into the room, and that's right when fucking Tyler Huntley's delivering he pizzas tried. over there, handing the ball out, and the <laughs> yeah. fucking lineman runs it back. And do you remember they were taking my blood pressure, and it was high? And you go, you might not want to take his yes. blood pressure right <laughs> I, now. And I was like, yeah, you just give me a minute for Jesus Christ. That was also when I brought you Wendy's. Yeah, you did go get Wendy's. Yeah. Like you had to pick I mean, you a fucking crazy. restaurant. I called you up. Two I, go, I go, hey, you want any food? And you're like, ah, maybe I do want food. And I go, you want some Wendy's? And you go, oh, my God. I was going to say Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about it because real quick, let's go to the next pictures here, Kirsten. Okay. Uh, it's me in the hospital here going back in. That's my view. Now, we had – this is a real meal that I was served at Cedar sinai <laughs> Hospital right here, okay? I just want to say, best medical care in the world. Not not the greatest food. Right. Uh, but homeboy's getting tilapia, and yeah. this is what I'm getting. This was a real meal. That was sausage, a piece of French toast, syrup, and a garnish, mm-hmm. okay? That was delivered to me. This looks like you've been bad. Do you know what these are? Well, I know. Look what how many bites I took. I <laughs> one. Tried, I tried one. That is chick. That might be your bite. Those are chicken it might tenders. Be, actually. <laughs> Those are chicken tenders. That's a pile of rice. And that's jello back there. Do you remember what I said? I took uh, a bite. I go, not enough barbecue sauce in the world. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, let's see this. <laughs> so what you do that was so bad they took away That's your sausage? Another breakfast I got. There, I told him I can't have it. I was like, I don't okay, want to fuck with okay, that sausage. Okay, but I'd ask him to bring you, me something did you eat else. That, did you eat that side salad? Yeah, I'd eat that. I, yeah, I'd take that bread and I just rolled it over and I would just dip it. Listen, here's the other thing I want to talk about. That's that's so, and we could go on and on. I'm not going to about our healthcare system, but the reason a lot of people end up in hospitals is because of their diet and. We're going in there and trying to fix that, yeah, and they're yeah, serving yeah. you high fructose corn syrup <laughs> yeah. and everything else in here. L- this next one's my favorite one. This one right here. <laughs> this right here, man. This is when I finally got to a chair. So that's me finally taking a picture of a meal across the room into my own bed there. I don't know if they're a sponsor, but this looks like an ad for better help. This is... <laughs> <laughs> I asked for a grilled chicken sandwich. This is the bread. Say, they this, gave me this, a craft single. Is this how you feed yourself? <laughs> The crazy thing is, by the end, though, you were eating these craft singles. I, yeah. Because, look, here's the thing. I'm not above a craft single. I Hell said this on no. the Kelsey. But, Sometimes but let me get it. Sure, sure. I'm at the hospital. Don't, don't, don't frisbee a fuck. <laughs> whoa, 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 he wanted cheese. Her. <laughs> you know, I got it. I got it. All right. Going up the like, This motherfucker. No. no oh. that, we joke like that thing might have slid across the floor. Like, it's wrapped. Don't worry about it. I got to get up there. I but. just picture somebody, whether it was that. One piece of French toast or this piece of chicken that's like, put something else on that plate. Put something. Pretty that up just a little Doctor bit. Doctor that up a little bit. So <sighs> Okay, so Monday rolls around. Monday rolls me around. Rolls around. And uh, I'm just going. Crazy. Through. Believe it or not, this is when things take a turn. This is, I know. We're not even. <laughs> <laughs> Monday rolls around. And they dope me up early in the morning, and I'm I'm annoyed because I don't want them to. I keep telling them I'm I'm trying to cut back my no. You're fucking every time I walk killers. in, you're like you have a tail. I'm like okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew what I was walking into. So uh, I go. The physical therapy nurse comes in. And that's the other thing too about a hospital. You. The one thing you really need is rest. And they're coming and checking your vitals every three hours, pain meds every four. There's people coming to clean your room. There's the people coming to or- take your order for food. There's so many different surgeons coming in, and there's da 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 da. You're mm-hmm. never getting rest. Mm-hmm. You're never getting real rest. So um, I say to this lady, she's there really early. I go, look, they just gave me a bunch of drugs, and I really want to pass this and go home today. Can you do you mind coming back in a few hours? She's like, I'll come back around noon. I'm like, perfect. I'll right. sleep for three or four hours and then I'll be able to pass this stupid fucking steps test. Mm-hmm. And she does. She comes back. But in the meantime, I have this weird fucking experience um, where, and this is before they gave me the drugs, because I want to be clear about that. Um, where I'm just laying in this bed and there's this black figure at the end and it doesn't look like a person or whatever. There's no, not one detail I can right. make out. It's a silhouette-ish of a, of a, of a person. Mm-hmm. Um, and it physically grabs my right foot with its left hand. It's facing me. I, I'm assuming it is. Yeah. And it wiggles my fucking foot like, and then it moves off to its left and it disappears. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I know people are like, it's the drugs, it's the drugs. Maybe, maybe sure, it was. Maybe. Sure, maybe it was. But I was Regardless, like. Regardless, it's a thing It's a thing that you experienced. It is. Right. And it comes back to me later. So okay. um, she comes back in to take the stairs test. And she's like, how do you feel today? And I go, I just feel weird. I can't put my finger on it, but I feel weird. She goes, do you want to do this today? I go, yeah, I want to get the hell out of here. It's been, what, now nine days or whatever. And uh, she goes, all right, so I, the stairwells are locked. So I brought this little step stool thing here, and we can do this. I'm like, great. So I go up and down the stairs thing a couple times. She goes, all right, now I want you to sidestep up it. Like you're holding on to a rail in front of you, you can sidestep. But I do that, and I come back down, and she goes, well, it's like sitcom time. And she's like, well, Mr. Sickler, I can say as your occupational therapist, you have passed the necessary tests to uh, be released today. And I fucking fell back on my bed, and I said, I'm clotting. She said, what? I said, were you feeling anything as she was talking? Yeah, I'm starting to feel that pain I felt before in 2016 when no one told me what was going on. And I'm like, boom, on the bed. And I'm like, I'm clotting. And she's like, what? I'm like, I'm clotting. So she calls this doctor in. What does it feel like? That's what he said. I said, it feels like, th- he's like, an elephant on you? I said, three elephants on my chest. It's, like It's it's all the way around her or it's, it's, it's straight it's on? It's pressure down and it's fire on the inside. It's everything. Wow. And you can't breathe. And he comes in, he checks my blood pressure. And that's when he says, sir, 
you might be having a heart attack. I said, huh? Mm-hmm. And he's like, tell me what you're feeling. I said, it's three elephants on my chest. My chest is on fire. And then I go, oh, my God, here it comes fucking, here it comes. I said, I feel the pain in my jaw down my left arm. I said, I'm getting heart attack 101 right now. And he goes, you might be clotting and having a heart attack. <laughs> I said, what? And then I black the fuck. But, but we do need this bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put you back in the yeah. broken one while yeah. you're out. You look over and it's I black door. out. Yeah. And when I wake up, there's this nice nurse there and I say, am I going home? She's like, your discharge has been canceled today, sir. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, fuck. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. So Duffy's there. They wheel me to the CT scans. Mm-hmm. And when I get out, they say, um, all right. You're, you didn't have a heart attack, but you had a, I guess it's a cardiac incident. I don't know. My heart swelled. And they said that normally your heart pumps two thirds from the left side, one third from the right. Mm-hmm. Yours is pumping 50 50, and it's not supposed to be doing that. Right. Um, and then they said you also have massive pulmonary embolisms covering both of your lungs. Now, again, I thought I had a clot. Right. And they're telling me this, and I was yeah. like, yeah, huh? I think one of the doctors said when I was there, you have extensive clots in yeah. both lungs. Yeah. Which is that, that you had already heard this. You had heard that from the other person. I was just over there eating that crab single again. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> we, we already know that one. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I had talked to Roy too. We had talked before about like disability insurance. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, insurance companies were comedians. They could say, well, he can roll on stage in a wheelchair. Or he could roll up to that table and podcast. And they, they technically you could maybe sure. if you could. Yeah. Um, but then one of the doctors comes in and he's like, look, you, this is serious. Um, and this is MLK day. And I have four different surgeons come in the room and I believe you were there or mm-hmm. at least when a couple of them said was, it like yeah. you should have died today. Yeah. If you would have been home when that happened. And I think, uh, this is what ends up becoming a more and more realization for you of like, this is what my dad felt when it was like, we don't know what's wrong with you and there's nobody else here. And because if you had been home by that yourself. That might have been my dad be like, good luck, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> good luck to you. See, see, see. You know how this ends. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'm, you know, it's uh, it's amazing for as much as the – you know, you had the clots from being in the hospital so long, right? So you can't deny that that, that complication is a, probably, if not the sole cause of it. But had you left early, like, you better you better hope you're close to your phone. Because if you weren't, I, ooh, I don't know. Even when I said that, I said, you know. I, one of your surgeons said we would have, if you had been home, we would be having a different day today. Yeah. Which I think is kind of all you need a surgeon yeah. to say. Yeah. And um, I said to him, you know, it's a lesson, too, in life. It's okay to fail. I mean, I should know that. That's how we succeed as comedians. It's all by failure. Sure. So I had never been happier to fail a test in my fucking life. Because right. if I do, like you say, I go home a day early. Mm-hmm. And I said the same thing to him. Here I am. I said, I what I felt today, I definitely would have called 911. He goes, no. That's when he was like, no, you wouldn't have. It had been. And, I, and then I got another one coming in telling me you should have died today. You don't understand. You nine one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's it. You don't understand that they keep saying you keep saying you're lucky you're in a hospital, but this hospital has a particular program for exactly what you're dealing sure, yeah. with, and you come in with this fucking genetic blood mutation. So now you become this very interesting subject to them, and they want to make sure you're okay. So I get now. We move off the spine shit because they're like, fuck your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got lungs to deal with. We've got blood. We've got heart. And we've got, um, oh, what the hell was because the Because they couldn't oh, even. the oncologist came. So they start putting you on heparin through the, the IV, IV yes, right away. Immediately. And, and they also tell you, if this doesn't start clearing up right away, and let me, before you throw in your factor five drink, they... <laughs> They say, well, we do have a procedure. We go up through your leg, and we can essentially blast these. But Suck since, them out with a tube the size of your pinky. Since you have factor five, we can't do that. Because you could brain bleed and be a vegetable. <laughs> I was like, we're not doing that? <laughs> right. We're not going to do that. Then, then just so everybody fucking knows, right. that option is off right. the fucking table. Right. I don't care. This was supposed. That's the other thing is, like, you could tell me that's a 98% fucking... Uh, 
positive procedure. I just fuck. I'm the guy right now that's in the point zero zero one category of right. all of this. So don't right. tell me anything simple. Like I don't want to hear simple. Yeah. I don't want to hear shit. Well, We're if not it, putting if the tube up my balls. If it's and the only closet. option, you'll take a ninety eight percent sure odds. But we oh. also at this point are supposed to have been here three hours. That's right. Three, three hours. hours, and then it became days. And at this point, we are two and a half weeks <laughs> yeah. out, into, out of, and more often into hospitals. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy enough out there that weed shouldn't be sending your world spinning. Ditch the paranoia and take a toke of something low dose and highly enjoyable. Dad grass harkens back to the mellow joints of yesteryear to keep your soul light and your head right. Dad grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre rolled joints and flour are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. If you're not looking to toke, Dad grass also offers the finest tinctures and gummies on the market. All the mellow goodness, no smoke required. All Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Look, I just told a friend of mine about this. He's like, man, I, I smoked some weed, and it just sent me over the edge. I'm like, you got to go. You got to go lighter, dude. Check out Daggrass. So whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Daggrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Daggrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to daggrass.com slash honeydew. Go to daggrass.com slash honeydew for 20% off your first order. That's daggrass.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. So... <clears throat> That's when they tell me, like, you need to a have a, a real yeah. conversations. You know, it's touch and go. You could have a clot break off to your brain. You could have any one of these could take you out. And that's when they say, you know, you could stroke. And I was like, <gasps> I, didn't even, I thought it was weird, but they kept going. They're like, a guy could come in here with a knife they, and stab you a few I times. I felt like they I kept going. I could have going. a gun and like, shoot you. Shut the fuck. <laughs> they start listing <laughs> every way. Yeah, like, if you lean against that window and fall out, <laughs> you'll die from that too. I was like, doctor, doctor, we don't need to tell him every like, way. Dude, stroke. I was like, well, then I couldn't fucking do my job if I had a stroke. Or, right. Or ever, maybe. I don't Who know. Who, Who knows? knows? Yeah. What the fuck? And you I mean, I believe in your resiliency, but yeah, who wants you don't want you don't want the question. You don't want the challenge. No. Given I the don't. option, you don't want the challenge. Don't. And I have to have a real conversation with my daughter's mother about fucking life insurance and wills and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, and she's like, What's going on? I'm like, it's not good. Like, don't tell Stella, just mm -hmm. keep it about my back. But this is what's going on, this is what's happening. I'm um, calling Roy. I'm calling. I called Kirsten. I was mm -hmm. crying. I was telling her. I was like, "If I die, you did a really good job." Just so you know, you killed it, <laughs> you Duffy. Like it was. And she texted me. She was like, "You guys all set with pen pals?" <laughs> or... <laughs> I'm just look. I got to be prepared. Ryan would respect that. <laughs> I would. And I'm no, also like, real. You, I can't die on MLK I Day. Love. I, I would be a footnote of a footnote of a footnote. You don't footnote want to be foot. fair Fawcett. You don't want <laughs> yeah, to be fair right. Fawcett. You want to in life, but not in death. Because <laughs> she died right. in the morning. If Michael Jackson that's died right. in the afternoon. And she got this in the yeah. corner. Yeah. And I think somebody else died that day, too. And that's how much we remember that. But you, you, uh, th I love this about you. I think it makes you a good comic. I think it makes you an even better friend and a great person and a great dad. But you're, you are emotional. You're yeah. an emotional person. I, I'm emotional too. I don't even like being sick. Like day two, three, and I'm, I'm just being on a couch and I like can't do, I get emotional from that stuff. So you, you have that and also what we do for a living. You have to access, how did I feel about that? So now I can talk about it, right? So we're kind of at that edge all the time anyway for the type of people we are, what, storytellers and comics, um, creative types, writers. So... You also have that emotion. You There's a realistic element to being like, hey, I need to make sure things are in order. But then there's the emotional burden of, I guess I have to make sure things are in order. Now I know what my dad might have felt like in the last few seconds, but I was in a hospital, thank God. And I was only, I'm only supposed to be here three hours, and this is what my breakfast looks like. There's not a lot. Like I was joking earlier about Diet Coke, but there are little things that, that make victory, you feel bro. better. A little bit. Sushi. Having Ravens game on. It's bringing just, sushi to the yeah, hospital. Yeah. yeah. Had it delivered outside. People <laughs> running out to get it. Like, I can't eat this shit anymore. Please help me. I've been here so long. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> so much of it was PTSD because 
going back, like my father was let out of the hospital. My brothers and I found him dead in his bed in the morning. And we'll get to like the the timing of being let out and stuff. But um, so now I know what I'm I'm dealing with, and yeah. it's fucking scary as yeah. shit. And you know, uh, I wake up the next day, and then the next day, and can yeah, we show this next picture? Like this is something that's so fucking dumb. But it's this dry erase board right here, and every yeah. day I'd watch that lady change that fucking date. The sixteenth, mm-hmm. I was supposed to die. The seventeenth, I see her. The eighteenth, and every day I'm getting more emotional. Like, okay, we're still here. Yeah, shit's moving forward. Mm-hmm. It takes about five to six days. They tell me before my heart goes back to normal size. Thank mm-hmm. God. They eventually wean me off the uh, IV blood thinner, and they're shooting me in the stomach with it mm-hmm. um, before I get out. And then again, I've got to pass all these tests. <laughs> and <clears throat> I don't remember <laughs> like some of the things that you're going to talk about, but um, Roy hits me up and he's like, hey, you're PayPal and random people. And I go, what are you talking about? No, I'm not. He goes, look at your PayPal app. <laughs> and I'm sending like $4.44 to this person. I paid, I don't know who you are, Kristen, but I paid some lady named Kristen $60 to babysit my daughter. I said, you're a rando. And she kept it. Good for you, Kristen. <laughs> Good for you. God damn. 60 bucks is oh, 60 wow. bucks. Yeah, you were. I, the last day, I think, was the day you woke up with me in the room. And you were like, hey, you're, you're in here? I go, yeah. Because I, I, I told you I was coming over. And then you were just so into and out of things. And then you knew that you wanted to like be as clear as you could on the day that you're supposed to get out. But at this point, dude, we've been in here weeks. It just in this new room. I love that you say we because you were there. Yeah, for real. You and Duffy oh, well, were there. Yeah, I mean, not, I, dude, but I, we have been there for weeks. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, that was a thing for me too. I just kept being like, I hate coming here. And I, there's no way that I feel how Ryan feels. Like, you're not. And every day of like, is today I'm going to get out. And then, and also every day, there was, a, there was, a, there was a huge chunk of this time where it's not even about the back anymore. Yeah. Which is oh, wild yeah. too. Right. The back is goodbye back. We're, we're not we're, even, we'll come back to the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never got above 30 degrees. Right. For a month. I'm mm-hmm. laying there, atrophy the whole nine. But, but also, the thing that's frustrating me is anytime now I'm being so – they're like, look, you're not leaving this hospital until – there's like 12 surgeons from all different departments yeah. until they all say – and I was like, I'm fine with that. Please. And, yeah. I don't want to leave till everybody says yes. And every time it's if you notice something different, please speak up and I'll notice something different. Sure. And then they'll come in. They'll do a blood test. And then that blood test, it will be different. And then it's – then I learned the system. Like, fuck, now it's two more days. And it's two more days because they do the blood in the morning. It's 12 hours. They get it at night. Now you got to fast for 12 hours to do it again. So mm-hmm. you're on a two-day cycle every time it's a setback and i'm just getting more and more frustrated and i'm also like i don't know if i'm gonna die i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna see my daughter again like all these things start going through your fucking mind like mm-hmm. I, you know my kids all this shit am i gonna be able to recover from this you're also not even on the those feelings and then the drugs of like face falling off you're on steroids steroids like crazy which alter your attitude they can alter your emotional state they can alter your anger levels and they did (laughs) and they did right i'm like and they did i'm like (laughs) okay i want to say this first I probably dealt, let's just say I dealt with 100 people. 96 of them were fan-fucking-tastic. And that's unbelievable odds. Yeah. It's In our healthcare system, that is beyond excellent. Oh, for sure. Now, there's always some fucking assholes. And I also say, you know what they call the person who finishes last in med school? Doctor. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you're good at what you do. And the thing about these nurses and stuff is you never see the same one either. Rarely. They're coming in from Pomona, Montebello, but sure. ba, 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 ba. Yeah. you know, I'm like, God, so every time you gotta tell your fucking story. But you can hear them getting downloaded out there and their yeah. little shift change because mm-hmm. they're all doing a crossover out there. You can hear a download when a new nurse comes Non-stop. in. Nonstop. But okay. now they're coming in to take blood and my veins have been tapped. So this one lady comes in and she's hitting me here. 
I fucking hate this needle here. I have good juicy veins in the main <laughs> ones, but these side ones hurt like How a do motherfucker. You know this just from their time being in there? No, because I get I do blood twice a month or twice a year with my regular doctor and have forever. So I know I've got good veins because these nurses are always like, I don't even need to tie you off. Yeah. But now I'm drying up because they, every time I get blood, they, I just go like this and then they just do it real quick. That means everything. Like, your veins are angry. Your veins are angry. They kept saying because they kept sticking them. You're getting stuck every day, nonstop. Remember, you got yeah. one in in your arm mm -hmm. always the IV so this lady hits me once and misses it and I'm just like <laughs> yeah. alright we all miss Yeah, hits me twice and I'm like <laughs> I go you miss it again she's like I did she's nervous don't swing at the first pitch I go alright well let's not miss it this time and she misses it I went you missed it didn't you and she's like mm hmm I go alright please just go get somebody that knows what they're doing real, real quick because this is these hurt yeah. And that was three of them. And I'm not letting you have a fourth shot. And she goes, okay. And she pulls her finger off. I swear to God. <laughs> blood shoots out. I go, yeah. well, there goes the blood we needed right there. I go, go. Oh, oh. Just go get somebody else. This dude comes in. Now, I say, you see this vein right here on my arm here where the IV is? He's like, yeah. I go, look at this one over here in on my right arm. You see how juicy that thing is? He goes, yeah. I go, please hit that one. Don't hit these small ones. They fucking hurt. He goes, okay. <laughs> where do I feel them stick it? Right here. I go, hey. That's not the vein I just why? told you. Can I ask you an honest question? Why do you think he'd... Why? Well, he answered. Oh, okay. He said it was easier for me. <laughs> That's what he said. It's easier for me. And I said, I don't give a shit. I, I go, but you just told me you would do it here. He goes, yep. And I go, you missed it, you? And he goes, I did. I go, so wait, dude... Wait, twice once? That first that time? That was his first one. But that's four total. Hmm. Four total. Hits me again, and I go, you missed again, didn't you? He goes, yep. I go, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here You're and mad. go get somebody that knows what the fuck they're doing. 0 for 5? You're mad. 0 for 5. I'm fired up, bro. 0 for 5. Their I'd, boss I'd been like, comes like, in. You, it's, are you guys getting dared? <laughs> so, <laughs> dared. somebody out there daring you guys? She comes in, and their, their, their thing says hematology on it. Yeah. You know, hematologist. Their mm -hmm. job is not to come do my vi – it's just to get the blood. Yeah. And she comes in. I go, look, I'm sorry. That's not indicative of who I am. I'm. That was very frustrating. They st she goes, you don't owe us any apology. She goes, you're 100% right to be pissed. It is their job. They're not here to do anything but get blood. And it's embarrassing for me to have to come in here and go behind them. So I'm sorry. And she, bang, gets them right away. Can you just take two? She goes, I'm way ahead of you. I'm taking two for sure. And she goes, look, I'm just going to tell you, you have to be an advocate for yourself in here. If you're not, you're just, you're a grain of sand on a beach. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They can't get to everybody. Now, <clears throat> I've got this fucking lady next to me who's also a yeller. She's the, all day. Oh! In the she's rooms? Next to my room. I don't and she's her. running out. Yeah, she's running out naked, they're telling me and stuff. I missed this, this yeah. entirely. I didn't see it. I'm on my back. Oh, but I just dude. mean, I didn't even know about this. Yeah. So you might remember it when this. So again, now they put me back on the Delauda because they're like, fuck your little flesh falling off. You went through some serious shit and you're in pain. You need this. Yeah. And I hear the, oh, right, all day long. Well, I finally have a night of sleep and I hit dreams uh -huh. again. Yeah. I have this dream that someone throws me into the back of this like old Toyota Corolla and then starts throwing bodies on top of me. And I'm, I'm screaming. And I know I'm screaming in my sleep, but I can't wake up. I'm like, oh, oh. Have you, ever, going, had, have you ever had? Have you ever had sleep paralysis? Yeah, one time. You know, that's a figure. A lot of people say a figure at the end of the bed too. That I had a. We'll get into that later. And I'm like, oh, oh, and they're burying me alive in this car, and I dig my way out. My back's killing me. I'm crawling. This is all my dream, obviously. I'm, I'm now I'm outside the hospital, and I'm showing I them my wristband. <laughs> Let me out of here. Let me out of here. <laughs> and uh, I'm showing them my wristband. I can't get back in the hospital. I finally wake up. I start buzzing that fucking thing. And this lady runs. She's like, what's the matter? You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I, I woke myself up yelling. I know I was yelling. She goes, oh, my God. Was that you? I go, yeah. She goes, we thought it was the lady that's oh. been here. So they ignored it. Just ignored it. I'm in there screaming for my life. And I said, listen. Get these drugs out of here and stop. Don't let me deep sleep. Please don't let me deep sleep. But I keep hitting these weird deep sleep dreams about it's weird like, people. Dude, you're and over shit. on Elm Street. It's fucking, it's horrible. I hate that shit. Um, okay, so this is like, you're in that room for over two weeks, right? That room alone, yeah. I spent almost the whole, I spent a month basically in the hospital on my back. 
And this, and tell me, we had some pretty cool surgeons. They would come in. Oh, yeah. They would make time for you. The one guy, oh. he came in crying for me. And I go, Why? what are you doing? You're not supposed to cry for me. Because every day, he's the one checking on me, telling me I'm going home tomorrow. And every day, it's a major – it's not yeah. just a little bit. He's like yeah. – he came in crying. Dude, that first cardiologist came in, and I recorded it. He spoke to you for, I think it was like 38 minutes. I was going to say easy half hour he did. It was over a half hour. And I'm like, I mean, just a doctor to give you that amount of time. He went over everything with you. And he came in, and he goes, your friend, the one who dunked. I go, first of all, how do you know that who was a I different am? One, and who, yeah. Oh, okay. And how yeah. he, he goes... Just let's say my brother is a big fan of comedy. I go, okay, dude. Yeah. Whatever you want to say. But you say. also had the one who was like, smoke weed. Yeah. He was like, hey, if that calms you down. It, it, and instead he even of said, taking um, edibles. Uh, no, what were they going to give me? It was a pill. It was um, Xanax. Mm -hmm. He said, if you don't, he said, we listen to our patients. And, and I can't believe he's like, you can already fly. All of them said I can fly oh, yeah. and, and smoke yeah. marijuana. Yeah. No cigarettes, no vapes, no cigars. Right. And I was like, how? And they're like, look, we don't want you to, but if you're going to, it's not going to make your situation. Yeah, he said, he goes, if we're talking worse. about cigarettes, we would be having a completely different conversation yeah. right now. But we, he's like, I don't, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah. And, it, you know, I think the, the overriding thing was how much you were not supposed to be in there. Then how lucky you were that you were still there when things went bad. Thank God. And then the frustration of being there, right? combined with everything you bring to it because as we get older in life you get closer and closer to your own mortality and you want things to go right but you also kind of hope they're going to go on your terms and nothing about this experience is on your terms and every day it's something different happens and every day i'm more and more frustrated that now i'm here for two more days mm -hmm. okay i'm supposed to get out wednesday wednesday like I know. it's gonna be friday friday it's, you're probably gonna be here the weekend i'm like fuck mm -hmm. fuck i've got my dog at this tr uh lady jackie thank you this dog trainer who was supposed to have her for three days you know, my daughter's mother's got my daughter the whole time. I'm not even getting to see her, and I'm freaking right. out about that. Like, I'm scared to FaceTime her because I don't want to see me all fucked up with oxygen tubes and all that shit. And also, you you get to a point where, like, you know, people who sent you stuff to the hospital. Right? Yes. It's very nice. But I don't, to speak as you for a second, you're like, I, I don't want to be in a hospital getting nice things. I'm get the fuck out of here. I don't want yeah. a thing, another thing delivered to this room. And, and like... uh there was a time to, where I it got to where with you where you would be like I'm fine you don't gotta come by and then of course I came by and it was great but you you also don't want to keep being the thing where you telling people to come by like every the good things feel bad because you don't want them to have to need to happen and the bad things feel bad because you're sick of fucking doing them it's yeah. like you can't it's hard to win it's a hard it's hard to get a win yeah there were so many people too some that visited so many that called and were there for me i know some people may not want their names mentioned i'm not going to just i also don't want to forget anybody so i'm not going to say mm -hmm. but there were some i mean i had calls from out of the country people out of like it was wild mm -hmm. joe coy offered to pay my medical bills yeah he offered to pay my medical bills he's like i got the money i'm like i know i'm watching you go <laughs> through the fucking 12 trucks and the five buses but i'm all right thank <laughs> you i love you <laughs> do the podcast again um, but the other doctor was like, there's always one patient you would remember. I go, do not tell me I'm about to be the, he's like, you're the one. I like, I don't want to be the one. Right, Put yeah, me in the yeah, top yeah. 10, bro. I don't want to be the number one. He's yeah. like, you're number one. I go, give me another one though that you stands out. And he goes, okay. And this is something I dealt with. So you're on these pain meds and I haven't shit for, for 15 days I get up to it. and they're like you gotta go and I'm like yeah I wanna go you've been giving me all these fucking stool softeners it's not working give me the fucking the little bullet I'm gonna put it up my ass the suppository well I think the nurse is gonna do it she's like no you're doing it I'm like what so she lubes this thing up excessively and I put it up there and I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to get one of these power dumps. And it's disappointing. It's a two-parter. But I finally go. And he tells me, like, it's good that you went because this one patient, same situation as you, didn't shit for three weeks. We are checking him out that day. And I say, listen, I want you to just 
just go before you hit the road. The guy's driving from L.A. to Fresno, which is a few hours. Yeah. And he's like, "I'm as your surgeon, I'm not comfortable discharging you. And he's like, I'm going. He's like, then you're going on your own because I'm telling you, you should really go just before you get in the car. He said the guy doesn't get farther than walking out of the room into the little corridor and he collapses. They call him. He goes, get an ultrasound on his stomach right now. They do. And dude's abs fucking split open because he had <sighs> shit. And now he's back in the hospital with a whole ripped open abdomen. That's number septic one. That's on. number one. <laughs> oh my That's god! That's got to be number yeah. one, dude. <clears throat> so, anyway, the mantra from all these di- I'm, I'm seeing, like I said, I, I'm a lab rat this year. I got to go see pulmonologist, oncologist, cardiologist. I got to go see the spinal specialist. I got to go see all these people. But the one guy was talking about uh, Tom. He's like, don't feel bad. Your friend, the one who dunked, he did something stupid. <laughs> and I just start dying laughing. He goes, you, you did nothing wrong. He goes, he was funny, but stupid. You did nothing <laughs> That's wrong. So great. And he was awesome. And they're also, they're all young guys yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and girls, yeah. ladies, I should say, excuse yeah, me, yeah. men and women. They are young. And I'm mm-hmm. like, God damn. And I like that better than the old fucking way of, ah, it's just this, it's just, right, yeah. it's just that. Yeah. These people really want to fucking figure out solutions and mm-hmm. stuff. So they're telling me every day if I see something different, I have to say something. You see something, you got to say something. We're finally coming to my last day. Yeah, this is the day you're supposed to leave. This is the day I'm supposed to I'm leave. I'm there. Yeah. And I, I do have another incident. There's one day what? where I have another incident where I think I'm having a heart attack or oh, climbing yeah. again. And I'm I'm punching the bed. I didn't know the beds had alarms on them, but I'm punching the bed. And I've lost my patience at this point because now we're three and a half weeks or whatever in. Mm-hmm. And I've listened to every motherfucking druggie yell. I've listened to a lady eat pills. Mm-hmm. I've listened to this like, oh, over here. And right. now I'm like. You synced up your trip. With I'm another yelling. Woman. I'm yeah. just yelling. Get Just put me the fuck out. They're like, sir, calm down. I said, it's if ca- I could fucking yes. calm down. I calm down like Kinda something's happening. It comes all the way. Around. I mean, tilapia. <laughs> You're in, you get in there a month. I'm like, give me the tilapia. You start <laughs> screaming for tilapia too. And I'm, I'm fucking walking yelling. in with a purse. I got my own pills. I finally I asked them for the Dilaudid IV. I'm like, just fucking knock me out. This I, pain I is excruciating. Yeah. I'm recording it, trying to play it back, and 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 I got. By the way, I'm wearing a fucking. Eye mask. I've got earplugs in, mm-hmm. plus soundproof headphones over mm-hmm. it. I got a sound machine on my phone, not mm-hmm. the Miami one either, bro. Just the regular old sound machine right here next to my head. Shh. Yeah. And they come in, they kick your bed because you can't hear. They probably said my name ten times. Right. So it's the last day, and I finally can shit on my own. Okay, this is after a month, and I go in and I shit. No, hold on. You're, I'm there, right? Yep, okay. you're there. This is not just that. Okay. So All we're right. getting cl- I have a show that night. And there's nothing worse than being than knowing you have to leave your friend. Because, and I knew it too. I fucking knew it that it was going to work out. That you were going to, because your thing was like, hey, just stay here until I'm good. And I, and I was pushing the time on it. And you can laugh about this now. In the moment, who, you, you're, and I mean this sincerely. Your compassion for where I need to be, who fucking cares, right? You've been in this place for weeks. So I don't expect you. And I feel guilty being like, hey, I got to go do something that you can't do for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be you, a And you're still going to be here. I'm not leaving you at your home. I'm leaving you here. And so they're saying, oh, we're going to bring you medicine. And you are... At your wit's end, you're roided out. You're you've got you've got drugs Drugged still in your system, mind. but you don't want to take the new drugs because you want to be as clear head as possible for when you leave. Because if you can't go to the bathroom, if you're too out of it, they can't let you leave within a certain window of having given you these drugs, which also means your pain is up, right? So everything's kind of like cresting at the same time. And I am skipping as much pain meds as I can because they are fucking me yeah. up. And so. This is when I was in, in there when you woke up. And so then we get to like, I think I had to leave. I had to leave at like 3.30. And then I end up like, oh, I'll wait till 4 with you. And then right around 4, the doctor comes in. So I'm like, well, I'm not leaving now, right? The doctor's here. And I want to make sure that Ryan has somebody else who understands what they're saying, whether I record it and send that to Duffy or somebody else or Kirsten, whatever it is. And so then... um, 
he goes and he's like, I'll come back. And you're like, I just want, I just don't want to leave here not knowing anything. And they're like, they're going to make sure you can leave when you're comfortable. So then um, the nurse comes in. The new one. And says, can now I? the Russian one. I'll give you <laughs> all your stuff. And you were like, I'm still coming down for these drugs. Can you give it to me later? And she says, yeah, that's fine. He's like, I just don't want to be. Hand-. And this is how. Because that is what they do. when you Also, when you wake up in the morning, like, hey. We know you're just waking up fresh at five o'clock here in the right. morning, uh, out of bonkers out of your mind from drugs. But we're gonna give you some real important information about medications you never heard of and don't know shit about. But and they, you also they would get mad at me too. Like I'm like, what's that one? I'm like Eliquis, tell them a sort. And I'm like, I don't know this shit. <laughs> right. I don't know but it. But you also were maxed out. Like you were saying stuff that would never happen. You're like, I don't want anybody throwing a brown paper bag at me <laughs> and saying take these. Did I say that? Yeah, and I was like, I was, I, and you know, I want to be like Ryan, shut the fuck up. They're not gonna do that. <laughs> but you <laughs> are so kind of like, you know, <laughs> out of it, right? I'm not taking tilapia pills. So like tilapia pills. I already take fish oil. <laughs> right. <laughs> So she's like, yeah, we're not going to do that. And then even when the doctor came in, you were like, you were like, I need to know it. He's like, yeah, well, yes, we'll do it. You know, he said, I remember this. He said, what are you worried about? I said, dying. Right. I know. He goes, I know that. But what are you worried about mm-hmm. after that? I go, clotting you're, and dying. You're He's at like, the we end. got it. You're at we the got end. The it, candles yeah. burnt down here. Mm-hmm. So then <laughs> you go, you go, hey, DVK. And I'm like, yeah. And you're like, I'm going to sit up. I go, okay. And I haven't seen you move. <laughs> I don't remember and you're like, any I of need this you though. to do me a favor. And I go, what the fuck does this guy need? And you go, I'm going to have you take a picture of my back for me. And I'm like, okay. I don't know what I'm going to look at, right? I hadn't even seen the photos we saw earlier. Oh, you hadn't? No. When it was oh, all shit. bubbling okay. out yeah. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, you're yeah. a reverse alien. By the way, that <laughs> is nothing. It got to, it started yeah. to look like an IV bag in my back. <laughs> like, like that's where it ball. got. Yeah. So uh, you're like, I'm going to need you to take. Uh, take pictures so i go okay no problem i'm like it's of course right so i take a couple photos for you and then you go all right i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna shit i go there and you're like no in the bathroom i go do i have to go with you and you're like no i can do it i go okay but i want to say this too also for a guy like once you have to shit like you forget how much we take for granted the ability to get up quickly and hustle to a toilet i'm over there in a bit i got a law it's called a log roll i got a log roll i gotta sit up i gotta wait like 20 or 30 seconds to make sure i don't get dizzy because they told me not to shit on the floor (laughs) give it a couple of those right i gotta breathe out i'm breathing in this fucking thing like and honestly if i can just get up and take my walker to the toilet and back that's a fucking huge day for me it's a huge day for me because what you also and you experienced this Later on, you'll probably touch on it, is how much your muscles have deteriorated. It's right? killing me right yeah. now. So, so then I go, okay, you're going to go in there. Like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still feeling bad because I, I got to leave, right? And so I go, what can I do f- for you? And you're like, I don't, you can put all that stuff together, right? And uh, half of it's mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I start, I start packing everything up. Ryan, you and I have been friends since the moment we met at the Bridgetown Comedy Festival in, I think, 2013, maybe 2014 at the latest, but I bet it was 2013. And uh, uh, so we're on our 10th year of being friends, okay? <laughs> I'm I'm on the far side of the room. Across from me is your bathroom, and in between me is the bed. You are sitting on the bed facing your bathroom. And I go, do you need anything? And you... And right as I look over, you go, nope. And I look over, and you stand straight up, and two little wrecking balls come <laughs> swinging. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm just watching your car dice. Just <laughs> car dice. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a goddamn desktop pendulum swing. <laughs> click, 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 click. And I'm like, <laughs> We're friends now. <laughs> In the rear view mirror of your dick just sees two just swinging. Oh, it looks like two old people on a porch. <laughs> oh, my 
I believe you too, because when I would sit on that toilet, they would definitely yeah. dip in the water. Yeah. They would definitely yeah. dip yeah. in the water. Everything's loosened up in that bed. So then <laughs> oh, shit. So you start you start walking. <laughs> dragging I'm walk your, yeah, yeah, dragging yourself. And then you go into the bathroom. And then the door opens, right? Uh, hey, uh, hey uh, where did Mr. Sickler go? I'm like, he left. I'm like, well, he's in the bathroom. And uh, okay, um, he, he's he's he doing all right. Her and I are speaking to each other as though you can't hear everything we're saying. Yeah, it's a it, the room is like an eight by eight. It's the size of the yeah, studio, yeah, yeah. right? And I go, uh, I go, he's he's there in the restroom. Oh, okay, uh, well, all of his medicine is ready. Are you the one taking him home? And now I know I need to be clear here, right? I go, I am not taking him home. So. All the information you need to give him, you should wait until the next friend of ours gets here. And she's like, okay, uh, I'll come back then. And now you're still in the restroom, right? And enough time goes by. I packed everything. I go, right? And like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I felt like I was uh, Brad Pitt and uh, the bear Jew. In- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Donnie, yeah. Uh, I go, uh, right. You go, yeah. I go, you're good. I'm good. I'm like, okay. So then not five minutes goes by. Not a lot of time. A lot of time in a bathroom, right? Uh, she walks back in and she goes, is he still in the bathroom? And I don't want to be mean to anybody, but I wanted to be like, is he in the bed? Like, Am I dancing with this him? This is the lady we're dealing right. with, yeah. So he goes, he's still in the bathroom? And and I said, uh, I said, yeah, he's still in there. And then... Uh, she goes, okay, well, I just wanted to give him all the stuff. I go, totally, understand. Trust me, nobody wants to go home more than Ryan. But uh, uh, as soon as he's out of there, I'll let you know. And then right around this time, you go, say, oh, my God. I don't want to make it funny, but I don't remember. It was something like you're like, you're like hold up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, her and I like look at each other. <laughs> And you're like, well, I don't know what's happening now. And I'm like, what is it, Rye? And you're like, oh, man. <laughs> now, hold on. Before you say this, what I see, yeah, I know isn't serious in the medical world. Sure. But, but I'm told. Let's add everything up. What if you're about I see to anything I've never seen before and things different at all, I am to report it. Right. But I am having second thoughts about reporting it before I even say hold up because I want to fucking go home and I'm literally scared only, again yes, that if I these, report this it's another two motherfucking but everything, days everything multiple levels yes you want to go home you also know the last time you went home you ended up coming back here yeah. you also know that if you had gone home too early the last time you dead. might not be here yeah. in a bathroom and I would have never got to see your little hangers okay yeah so also, you know about what happened to your father, right? And you also know the, the number one person who you're trying to stay alive for, right? All And you want to go home. All these things are happening to you. Plus, you're on drugs. Plus, you're in pain. Plus, you're on roids. So even the roids alone takes off, you know, every uh, cars have governors on them. For anybody who doesn't know, a governor, it may say 150 on your dash, but that motherfucker is not going past 115 it, because it has a governor on it. So your governor's off, or at least not as effective for emotions. This is what happens to people with PTSD, which, by the way, you also are going through traumatic things for yourself, right? You're seeing shapes when you don't Touch think him. you're high. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you say, uh, you say, you know, hold up. And yes, you do want to leave, but I, I'll let you tell this part of what, what happened what, in there. So I see blood in my stool, stool right? Yes. Which is, and it's red blood. So I know it's not that big of a deal in the medical world. However, my meds have been changed. There's right. so much going on. I even said to her at first, like, I don't know what it, what it is. I'm, maybe it's a hemorrhoid. Right. But did I push too hard and fuck my right. back? And like, I don't know what's going on. So what I would love mm -hmm. is a second opinion and preferably from someone, anyone of the multiple people who've been dealing with me. And this lady got upset. Well, she first said. It's um, not a big deal. And I yeah, was like, she tried I to know. downplay it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not. Which I She's think not wrong sitting right, either, by the I way. I think sitting here right now at this table, you probably would lean more towards, right? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, 
All right. If you really think so, and you're gonna, but you'll still check with somebody. But this tone, this attitude, I have, I don't know that. Go talk to me after that many weeks in the hospital and see if I'm still keeping this timber in my voice. Right? <laughs> timber. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so then you are lacking. I'm gonna tell you as I love you. You are lacking the ability to grant her as much grace as you normally would. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. She is lacking the ability to use the right words to make you understand that she is going to do the right thing. And once these two ships miss the dock, neither one of you could get back. It's Rocky Drago all over, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Right. It is. Dude. You couldn't get back. And no. so she then, what? then we also find out I'm now in a room with two stubborn people. And you are, I have decided you are not here to help me. So go get me someone who is. Just a second opinion from somebody on my right, team, please. Right. She has decided I'm going to make this guy understand that I know what I'm talking about, which she may. She did. Right. But you could no longer hear that, nope. and she could no longer go. Like if she had gone, hold on, I fucked up. I'm not saying I fucked up or did anything wrong. I'm just saying I fucked up in the way I made you feel. I didn't even need that. I just need all I needed was like, I'll go get somebody. But to be fair, too, that's it. You can't even say right now if that would have worked, but I think it would have been a better tactic. If she would have said, I'll get somebody for you right now, it definitely would have worked because it's all I want. Both keep talking, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she she go, you go, just stop. Well, hold on, hold on. I also say, I understand what you're saying, but yes. the one thing I'm told is that if I see anything different, I'm to speak up about it. And this is different. Right. And you, this is your this first so you know, time I've seen before you. she did the dig in. You were angry enough, and I love you, but <laughs> I, I don't want to do it to that camera right Show there. That, dude. I go. <laughs> <laughs> you gave that to her. Yeah, like you hey. son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, dude. I come from divorced family, <laughs> so I'm used to I'm used to trying to trying to get off first and steal second at the same time. I'm like I'm like uh, I have a line in my new hour talking about somebody else where I go he gets like this. That's what I, I was yeah. like hey 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 hey. So uh, so she like has to me look, but then by the end of it, I was like okay, I have my own trauma from people yelling right, so I did not like that. But I also knew you were coming from a place of fear, fear. and caution. Fear being the biggest, uh, uh, which, will, yes. which will come in in about 30 seconds in a real way. <laughs> yeah. So she leaves, right? And then she goes and gets the charge nurse. And now, and this is so crazy is not the right word. It's just, we're just so close, right? But we do need to know what this is, right? So she leaves, <laughs> and you go, you go, go in there and look at that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked you to look at it. I did not. Did. I took a picture. <laughs> oh, you think you took a picture? I go, <laughs> what? Do you go, go look at it. You tell me there ain't blood in there. And I go, <laughs> oh, okay. So then I, I walk in, and you go, you see that blood? <laughs> You're back on the bed now. <laughs> And I'm like, I also like that you're making, I'm yelling at you. It's literally that close. It's true. It's right it's there. It's true. You are, like, you are like, you, say, you see that blood? And I was like, I just need to know, are you and mom going to stick it out? Or it's, <laughs> is this my fault? <laughs> what I do? Do I need to go hide under the piano again? So, so I go, uh, oh God. I go, I go, yeah. And you go, come here. And I go back in there. You go, Take this phone and take pictures of that shit for me. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You took the picture. I wanted to be like, I took it. no. <laughs> I went from I need to go do a show <laughs> to taking pictures, to taking of my surgical bloody photos, shit. watching your balls <laughs> sway like a Tay in the way, like Nell. Oh, to, <laughs> to now, I'm taking pictures of my friend's shit, and it's not even for a prank. <laughs> So then I take oh, those, I take the photos for you, and I'm like, we have derailed here. We are so close. And then uh, I'm also by this point, so everybody knows, I'm standing there with all my stuff, like my back, because I gotta go. I mean, some of mine. And I yeah. <laughs> and I feel horrible because I also don't want to leave you. 
And I and in your shoes, there's no way I wouldn't feel you did never say this. You never put this on. You never indicated it at all. But there's no way I wouldn't feel somewhat like you had you had to go. Like you had to go, Daniel. Like I, I know, I know. never crossed I know. my mind. But that I, I, we're both caring people. So uh so I stand there, <laughs> charge nurse comes back in. She's like, So we um I heard we had a little bit of an issue. And you go, Oh, we did. <laughs> I but really then, <laughs> then you you turned and you were like, look, I, I've been, in, I was supposed to be here three hours. I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be here longer than that. It took forever to do it. I had to come back here. I was supposed to be gone in a day, then two days, then the day after, then the day after, then the day after. And then I got here. Then the day I was supposed to go home and you, you walked it through and you go, no one wants to leave here more than I do. Okay. I'm sorry for being upset. I didn't feel like I was being heard with what I was saying. All I want is for somebody to look at it. I appreciate her looking at it so that she can get the right person, but I didn't need to be told what it was or what it wasn't. I just needed somebody on my team who's been dealing with me to come look at it because my dad died and I woke up one day and he wasn't there. And I mean, look, right? I'm watching you, right? And you got, you go, I apologize for being emotional. And that's when you saw. You, the anger, which I will put on the, the, the drugs and the frustration and the Steroids fear and all and that. Yes. All of it. That's when that was able to take, because in that time you took a few breaths because I wasn't saying much to you. Because <laughs> I wanted you to just let it go. Sometimes people think in these scenarios they should like chime in and sorry, like that's the worst thing you can do. For, sometimes just let just, them get it out. Just let it get it out yes. and then don't it's contribute like a seizure. to it. Just don't move be, away. Don't, yeah, it's yeah. a good, it's the best time to not yes and. Don't anything. Don't know and either. Just go, I hear you. I hear you. And uh, that allowed you to then let what was really going on. It is a serious. You do want that looked at. But also what's behind all that and what, what you felt when you saw it, right? Because you'd be like, motherfucker, right? That's what I'm, I'm yeah. in there for 30 seconds because I'm right. like, I know that black stool means there's blood Internal, in my stool, but yeah. this is red. I've had this yeah. before. Like, right. But do I fucking say, do I regret not saying something and going home? And they're right. like, well, did you happen to bl shit blood when you were here? I'm right. like, yeah, yeah, I did. Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ. But you didn't say. Right. And so that allowed it for you to then come. Here's what here's what it is, miss. And uh, she said, okay, um, well, I will have somebody on your team. You go, that's all I asked for. And then she walked out. That's when I looked at you and I said, that was really well said. You Ryan. said really well done, Ryan. You did yeah. good. Yeah. I was like, thank you. Bro. Let's do the comment. <laughs> like, thank you. you wanna, your cheek fell off, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Here, put your cheek back on. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so then um, then the surgeon showed up. I go, what are you yeah, doing here? He goes, because yeah. I heard you were having problems. And he fucking told everybody in that room, Ryan's right. This man was told if he sees something different to report it, he did. I'm here to tell you that I think it's okay. However... It's your call. Do you want to stay here again tonight or do you want to go home? And I was like, I want to fucking go home. Mm -hmm. If you're saying that's all right, I want to go home. He's yeah. like, great, you can go and home. And you said that to him. You go, Boom. I know. You actually, this is one of the things you said in that, to that person too. You go, nobody wants to get out of here more than I do. And I know that you guys need this bed because there's probably somebody in the room where I was I in say that. that can't wait to be up here. And I want them to have the opportunity that I had to get the best treatment That's possible. who I am. Yes. 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 But you had, you had locked back in to that point, right? Which was good and to be expected and you didn't call anybody any names you didn't do anything violent or anything like that but you had hit your limit and i just it was just two ships missed the dock they were supposed to hit at the same time i just gave her a firm stop i gave her one of those <laughs> and she was like all right i think i'm gonna I was stop like, <laughs> i was like fucking stop <laughs> stop yeah um and then they let me out yeah, a few and hours Duffy later, Duffy right? takes me home mm -hmm. yeah I, dude when i when i went downstairs and he was waiting to get checked in the relief to make it about me, <laughs> the relief that washed over me that I I'm literally this is a track meet and I'm I'm literally getting I don't I don't have to set the baton down and hope my track mate track track team member comes and picks it up. It he, I handed it to him right when I go hey he's up there just this is just what he's going through stuff like you know he just found this they're waiting to find out and so that felt great too to be able to like okay because I hated leaving you and then yeah you got to go home. He Around took me home. So that yeah, night. like nine or yeah. ten. It was late as shit. And uh, I was scared literally to death to, to go sleep. to sleep. Yeah. And he slept over. Mm -hmm. And we watched a little bit of the comedy store doc. 
I remember I got up. I didn't. Even, I got up out of my bed at like five in the morning. I was so hungry. He's poor dude sleeping. He's got to go to work. I'm microwaving these pizzas that are, you're not supposed to microwave. It was bricks. I just didn't care Look, anymore. Do you you have more photos from any of that other stuff? Yeah, I'll like show when... you some other stuff. Okay. Um, but the real PTSD hit me because my father, same situation, got out on a Wednesday night. Thursday was Thanksgiving. We went home for the weekend, Friday, Saturday. So what I really didn't tell a lot of people, if any more than one is uh, that that Sunday night was the night I was really scared of. Because mm -hmm. I was like, this is the fucking night. This is the night he went to bed and we found him dead in the morning. And so that one, I don't think I got to bed till like four or five that really? day. And then my sleep was all fucked up for a while. But I got out. I um, Yeah, let's look at some of these other pictures. What we got coming up here, Kirsten? Let's see. Because I want to thank a lot. There's my stepson, this six foot five motherfucker <laughs> that was a beast and took me everywhere. Yeah. He's uh, did everything. Guy. That's my daughter right there. She came up and finally they let her come up after some BS went down, let her see me. And she mm -hmm. decorated my walker right there, kept me comfy right there. Um, that's from YMH. I want to say thank you, Tom, Christina, Nadav, Annie, everybody down there from the YM YMH crew. There's so many people I'm I'm That's missing to it. I'm intentional. That's how I rolled out right there. I had my night pants <laughs> the whole time in there. And uh there I am when they finally said I could fucking go. And then that's my right before my haircut the first time right there. But look how much slimmer you are from that first from that Friday. You know, that's the other thing too. You were like posting on social media. Like you posted before you went in. It was like, hey, finally happening. And then And I did a even said, hopefully, see you all on the other side, hopefully. And then where's look my at, haircut? Look at the difference. Then I got a haircut. Look at look at me right here, all cleaned up after that one. Not that one. Yeah, this the next one. one. Yeah, there yeah. we go. That's my first haircut. And then this is me right here on my walker, fresh out of the hospital. They told me I had to walk. That's me going around the pool in my night pants right there. And that was a big adjustment for you to realize how hard it was just Man, to do Man, I thought things. I'd be able to do two laps around that pool without a walker. That's my second one right there. And I'm using the walker because what you spoke to earlier, the, the atrophy, like I don't have an ass. My hamstrings are fucking rubber bands. My mm -hmm. neck hurts so bad from holding my fucking big ass head. And when I first came back to the studio to record, my sh I didn't know what it was. I was like, what is going on? It was my own shoulders like pulling me down and mm -hmm. just fucking uh, on the neck. So, um, so many people uh, can't tell you how expensive <laughs> this motherfucker is. Go support my my special lefty son uh, on YouTube. Also, Come you, out and see me There's live. a lot of messages you probably received. You'd, you'd have to go back through your phone. I mean, you're talking about weeks of being Listen there. Listen to me. I remember people so reaching out to people. you and be like, oh, you know I heard from today? You know I heard from today? So many people. Yeah. So it was so fucking nice. And again, I don't want to forget the someone. the love on social media, man. All your, all your oh, do's and man. don'ts. They, so many names to throw out yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, because but... you posted on, you're like, I remember when you went back after the three-hour debacle. You were like, wasn't supposed to be like this. And then you kind of went silent for weeks. Yeah, I'm not the one. guy that does all that. No, I know. I probably should be, probably help with followers and all, but I don't really want to live life like that. that. I, I yeah. sat there, like, it felt very pandemic y to me in a way where I was stuck at home and I, I watched everything. I signed up for BET Plus. Like, I signed up for so much shit to watch I, and I watched all of it and then I just you know you start to see like oh it's everyone's version of true crime comedy yeah, yeah, drama yeah. you know whatever um but I've always said the one thing I wanted to be that my father never was was an old man and and I'm trying my ass off to get there um it was also really hard for me too like I'm a hustler I'm not used to like laying still I can't mm. that's been very hard and the other thing that, that gives you PTSD, too, is when my dad died, like, there were so many nice people that just do bought clothes for us and sent them over. And I just remember feeling like a fucking loser. I felt like... Uh, <clears throat> when you were like a kid? A yeah, 16. I felt like this charity case. And I didn't... Yeah. I was like, fuck that. I was also so mad that the one parent who really loved us just died. Right. Um, so even now, like, people have brought food over. Um, people have... Come over yourself. You came and hung out with me and Stella playing uh, and fucking Dude, crazy I, eights, shoots and laughs. I whipped your daughter's ass and shoots and laughs. <laughs> yeah, but she got you crazy eights, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you watch football with us, but, you know, I don't like asking somebody to get up. Can you please get me the ice pack? Can you, you know, go make me a drink? I'm I'm been on my own since I'm 16, so mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. And it's very... It's very humbling to have to do that. Mm -hmm. It's very, and it makes me feel like that charity case You're again it when I was sixteen. Hard for you to make me take pictures of that shit. Yeah, it was hard <laughs> for me to ask you to do that, dude. <laughs> 
So, but um, no, but that, it's a those are experiences. That, those are growing experiences. Well, I wanted to end this with. First of all, I love you. Love you too. Thank brother. you for everything. No, it's not a question. And there's been some uh, some fun articles that have been written about this. The one that popped up that made me laugh because it that's a picture of me at wait, my. Wait, you just hit. Some, okay, no, there you go. Oh, you're wait, good. You're it's good. loading again. It's yeah, a picture yeah. of me. Oh, there it is from my stepson's graduation. I don't Where? know why they. I don't know. It's on my. Instagram, but yeah. it, it, this is why you shouldn't believe shit that you read, okay? It starts off with American professional comic, author, and performer named Ryan Comic Sickler. <laughs> Went to a close-by grade school for his essential training, moved on from that point, and afterwards signed up for a secondary school in his old neighborhood. None of this, none of that's right, okay? None so this is supposed to be in Baltimore? <clears throat> this is an article about me, who, I, what I'm going through health But from the perspective of, some, of being from that area? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, Ryan began, uh, wait, wait, starting around, uh, his most memorable video was named Cult Man. <laughs> they put a, an L in that motherfucker. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Um, so it says Ryan Sickler's back. Now, I also made a joke saying I'm finally going to get a bacchiotomy. And a bacchiotomy is a joke that Dave Chappelle makes in Half Baked, where he's like, yeah. doctor said I got to get a bacchiotomy. So right. I just put that out there, right. okay? Ryan Sickler's back, a medical procedure. Ryan, ex oh, this is that's the title. Ryan expounded on his second crisis. Uh, blah blah blah. Where is it? Where, oh, bacchiotomy frequently <laughs> alludes to a careful <laughs> procedure expected to change the life structures of a patient. They're saying I went in the medical clinic. Ryan Sickler is preparing <laughs> for his bacchiotomy, dude. These fucking idiots. I persevered. It says through to horrifying. Torment for a considerable length of time. Blah blah blah. This is probably written by a fifteen-year-old. Who trying knows? To get an or AI, AI yeah, or some or bullshit. AI, yeah. So uh, they they said the same thing. We don't. Not much is really known about his condition now. This is my condition. I just started physical therapy yesterday. Um, I got a long motherfucking year ahead of me. And and what I didn't know about blood clots is you know I'm on blood thinners for life now. But I didn't know that I live with these clots until your body. Gets Exposes rid of them. them. I, I was yeah. surprised to hear that. I thought that is kind of dematerialized. Yeah, I thought the blood thinners would get rid of them, but they said it could be up to a year. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take things a little slow. I'm walking 15 minutes a day, and I'm literally doing side kicks and and knee raises. A lady came to my home to to teach me this shit. So um, how do you feel? I feel great now. I feel like you know I'm driving feel, again. I, I watched my daughter like the, the first night I got home, and like she laid in bed with me and. It was just like, man, like I would have missed all this. And right. now we, you know, my daughter has been missing me. Like when she came to see me, she went crazy. Like I, I surprised, I had Kirsten take me to her school to pick her up. And she had no idea I was coming to get her. And she ran out to me. She's like, dad, you're okay. And like gave me this huge hug. And just on Friday, like the other thing that I love too is uh, like all of us, like I love that I rolled the dice on myself. I have a schedule now that I create. Yeah. You know, I don't have a nine to five where I can't go see my daughter's play or, or I got to feel guilty about missing work because of this right. or stay later because I missed this two hours, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they had this creative writing exercise where you could come and the kids could read to you. And she, you know, I didn't tell anyone I was coming. She, Her mom was already working. She wasn't expecting anybody. And I showed up. Man, she fucking ran up to me. She's like, I miss you. I love you. Oh, my God. We sat down and read it, and I was like, this is what my daughter needs. This is what I fucking need. Yeah. You know. So right now, my focus is health, recovery, because it's going to be a minute before I'm back. To Did fold. the surgery take? I realized yesterday when we were talking. I really don't I know. I didn't even ask you. Until the pain is gone from physical therapy, I really won't know. I don't. I, I mean, it's sore because it's. Okay. I haven't rehabbed it, so I don't know. But we're not all swollen out and everything. No, it's it's flat down now, and uh, and that's why they want me to wait one more week, and they might send me to a facility to do physical therapy and work out there. But it's it's going to be a few times. And you'll a week be back of that. on the road this year. I'll be back starting in uh, end of May. We're going to just start doing like one a month in May and June, and then I think we'll do a couple every two weeks and see how that goes. Okay, good. But I got to build a new hour because I've dropped my hour coming up here in a couple weeks. Lefty Sun on my YouTube. Uh, and I will get you dates and all that, and we'll get ticket it's links great up hour. on the website. I mean, we anybody did. who saw it live saw me crush. <laughs> you did crush, dude. You <laughs> I did. was just setting it up for you. Can I ask you before we roll? And I know mm -hmm. we went long. I have no idea. That's okay. But um, from a 
what you touched on about, you know, the fears about being an old man, unlike your father, or the fears of like how close you touched it, and and uh, and and you know this dark figure that you said even came back another time, and like, and also the sixteen year old kid who was really angry, and then was forced and I was, I'm happy to force you to do it. I would force you to do it again as much as you needed to accept, um, generosity, to accept service. Right. Did, is anything lingering from any of those feelings in a positive way that you feel like I, 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 I should, and I can be, there's a difference between being in a derogatory term, a charity case and, and being somebody who allows, people to love. be there for them. Yeah, to to love them. Yeah, I, I've always said that what I just want is love, and I realize that I don't also know how to accept it. You know what I mean? Like, so many people... That's the other thing, too. Like, you got to let people be who they are. Some people don't know how to... And, and, and look, if I wasn't me it's in true. that same situation, I don't know what I would have done or said or sent. I would have certainly done something. Um, but each person has to do it in their own way, what they're mm -hmm. comfortable with. You don't know what someone else's trauma might be like. They might be like, look, I just can't go to hospitals. It's been this thing for me where everybody, you know, whatever It doesn't make is. me better than anybody. That's not why I say yeah. this. But, like, I've lost people in my life to cancer where you watch them go. Yeah. Right? And it, and then there's always those, like, peaks and valleys of, like, good for a little bit. Now we're back in here. Now we're good for a little bit. We're back in here. And that was a hard thing for me. Uh coming back into those hospitals and it's all taupe and beige and as sterile as it can be while also seeming gross at the same time and in certain ways and the food and the cafeteria and and all those things. But I don't say that to say anything good about myself, but you that is that is something that people can give you in whatever way they can. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. it is. And for some people, they can't do that. For some people, it's hard to do that. Some people don't think anything about it. And as long as everybody comes with what the love that they have to give, it doesn't mean it's always the love you need at that moment or the best type of love, but at least it's true and honest. And then it's on you to accept that. You know what I mean? Because I, I went through a couple, there were a couple times where I was like, he is not telling me. So some, Ryan is not, Cannot answer the phone right now because he doesn't want to, or he's sick of it, or he's he, for the first he doesn't want to say life, to me, "Come here." When, for the first time in my life, I didn't even know how to do it. I had to ask Sarah Weinshank how to put my phone on silent, and I turned that motherfucker off for like three days. Why? I just didn't want to hear. You know, there was so many people. Also, when you, you have to tell your story every time to somebody else that calls, like, and I'm not complaining about it. I had so much love. I had family call, friends call, you know, loved ones, whatever. They all were calling or checking or texting or messaging. Like, there's so many people. So if you reached out in any way, family, friend, foe, I don't give a fuck. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Yeah. Yeah. It does make a difference, so you know. In it just, people's it's lives. interesting too, though. I, I hope that, I don't know how to accept love. I gotta well, learn. Well, I that. bet you can in certain ways. You know, they have those five love languages. Rory and I just did them. Yeah, I know mine. And but I wonder if you're one of your least ones is acts of service, and you have a hard time accepting that type of love. I, I do. Or feeling good yeah, about it, and you found yourself in a position where I like to be the one that does that. Sure. You know, and you found yourself in a position where you needed to get it, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. I think you asked for it in the right ways. I think you advocated for yourself. And I, I think that you did what you needed to do to still be here. And I'm glad you are, buddy. Thank you, brother. I love you. Thank yeah, you. For, love you too. Um, plug and promote everything again, please. <sighs> Dumb People Town and then uh, Pen Pals. You, you can also uh, watch that on YouTube, both those actually. And then um, everything else is danielvankirk.com uh, myself and Irene too who's a great comic we have a, a show that was running here weekly we're on a bit of a hiatus so that'll be coming back and everything's there I'm sure I'm forgetting something but you see me around just go to danielvankirk.com I love you same buddy. on Instagram at danielvankirk um, as always Ryan Sickler and let me say this we're gonna get links up for the tour dates the specials coming we'll be promoting the shit out of it don't even worry uh, as always Ryan Sickler on all social media, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm -hmm.